and welcome to the IMB World Series GT3 Championship Round 5 here at Watkins Glen. At the end of the two races here tonight, we're going to hit the halfway stage in this championship with our first couple of races of eight that we're going to have in North America. Four rounds starting off here at Watkins Glen and continuing on next week when we get to Montreal. My name's Ian O'Leary. I'm alongside Zach Sweeney for this race. The standard format, 25 minutes uh, first race, then a 50 minute second race coming up with the reverse grid in there as well, of course. Zach, it's going to be very interesting. It comes as no surprise that the drivers are already complaining about the BOP heading into this race. Well, they will. They're racing drivers. They'll find any excuse that they can. I'm sure the admins do the best job they possibly can in order to try and keep the cars nice and equal. There is always going to be uh, some discrepancies uh, along the way. But talking to about how the Porsche can be up to seven tenths a lap quicker in some cases, it's not ideal for sure. And that is definitely going to be sort of a, a, a word of complaint for a lot of drivers who are going to be a little bit upset that they feel that they don't quite have the chance to uh, to, to compete potentially to the standard they would have wanted to. But Watkins Glen is a track that can definitely throw a curveball, so it's not hopeless for them. Oh, one man who's certainly not complaining about his situation right now is Elliot Hellyer, who's on top of these standings right now by 14 points ahead of Neil Butler. Then we've got Stuart Reynolds there in third. Butler and Reynolds, by the way, have huge drop rounds, so they've got a lot to fall back on. Same can't be said for Hellyer or Alvin Kjellberg, who's in fourth place there. Chris Chatterton rounds out the top five with Louis Gardner, Ayesh Yomantas next. Kieran Smart is in eighth. Andy Miller and Jonas Dreyer 
uh, round out your top 10. It is still very, very close, especially up the top of the Pro Championship standings. In Pro-Am, Lucas Romano has been winning pretty much since day one. He won the first two races of this championship and he's held the championship lead ever since. It's down to 13 points now after a double win from John Williams last round. Liam Ahern is down to third. Felix Pearl down to fourth. Chris Thacker will round out the top five with Michael Passam and Didier Vlamink in there. Uh, Alex Bomberg is eighth. Stuart Vinas and uh, Francois Perdra rounds out the top ten in the Pro-Am standings. And in the Am standings, Connor Botton continues to lead there. Uh, the biggest championship lead, actually, of anyone uh, goes to him. Dirk Bout second with the Armour Sester Moyne and third. Louis Boubier is now into the top part of the standings, finally, after getting uh, a couple of races strung together last week. In fifth place, Tony Norgran ahead of James Slate. Cole Pierce is seventh ahead of uh, Anthony Bruce Letts. Then it's Timo McKeon and Jerome Reigns. Uh, rounding out the top 10 in each of your standings. We're only four rounds into a 10-round championship, Zach, so we can't read an awful lot into them. Um, but uh, those who are up towards the front will, uh, will certainly not be complaining. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely not. They are going to be, you know, at this stage in the season, it's, it's, it's one of those things. A championship lead is definitely more of a novelty than, than anything. But when you get to sort of round 7, 8, 9, uh, 10 towards the back end of the season, you look back at the start and think, what could I have done more? Is there anything uh, I could have done better? Are there any points that I potentially left on the table and, and all things like that? Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's that hindsight that can, you know, definitely uh, give you some, you know, it, it can make you feel a bit grateful, uh, but it can also make you feel a bit regretful that you didn't quite capitalize a lot uh, early on. Uh, so it's things that are made now that give you that momentum going into the uh, you know, sort of the second half of the season that can then really uh, sort of turn the tables uh, in terms of a championship fight. But it definitely is heating up quite well. Amongst all three, it must be said, even with Conor Botting leading the way uh, by the most in AMS, it's still relatively close and there is definitely still a lot to be, uh, to be played for. It certainly is. And we're looking forward to the remaining six rounds of this championship. As I mentioned, we're going to hit the halfway mark at the end of this round. Uh, the uh, Circuit Gilles Villeneuve, Montreal, is coming up next. That's in one week's time. Then a week after that, we're going to Monza, then Mossport. Uh, and then we've got a break week before the final push to the line with uh, with a couple of races. Etona and Bathurst as well. It's a great schedule and it's uh, going to be a great end to this season, hopefully with some uh, championship fights along the way as well. This circuit, though, is one of those uh, kind of twisty-ish ones um, around here. Not too many straights around here. I've got to say one that I wouldn't say would have suited the Porsche, but clearly... It is doing, um, and uh, they're the ones performing well around here, but there are plenty of places that can, that can cut you out around this circuit. It is a very tricky circuit indeed, particularly, you know, that chicane going into the, uh, uh, just off the back straight. It's it's very tricky if you don't get it right. Those curbs are quite high and you chuck in a lot of momentum uh, with the cars. You get it slightly wrong, the car can bottom out over the curb and you will definitely uh, nosedive straight into the barrier if, if, if you're not careful. Also, there's a couple uh, of uh, points, you know, with the lack of tarmac runoff at some places, even here uh, through the S's, there is very uh, limited margin uh, for error because if you get it slightly wrong, especially with lap traffic potentially and uh, towards the back, back end of race one, definitely towards the mid part of race two, there's a lot of places where Watkins Glen is gladly uh, going to uh, spit you out if you let it. So it is definitely one of those uh, circuits where consistency will for sure be rewarded. Certainly will. And uh, consistency didn't count for an awful lot in qualifying. And that helped Neil Butler to a pole position. He'll be alongside Elliot Harrier up towards the front there. Abin Kjellberg will be third ahead of Louis Gardner. Then it will be Callum Beeman running at the top five. Stuart Reynolds might be a bit disappointed with uh, sixth place. Chris Chanton seventh. Kenny Hermans is in eighth place. Ahead of Andy Miller and Kieran Smart running out the top 10. Now, Yusuf Yomantas is in 11th out of Lee Holmes. That's Thomas Wright to Jonas Dreyer, Thomas Dandridge and Harry Wills running at your 16 car profile. John Williams has gone from back to back wins in the Pro Am field last week to a pole position here in this race. This time, Didier Vlamink is second at a championship leader, Lucas Romano. Then it is Dean Timms in fourth out of Juho Hootenen. Jeremy de Boiver is in sixth out of Stuart Wyness. Then it is Liam Ahern. Francois Perdrao and Michael Patterman round out your top ten with Felix Pearl and Chris Thacker just missing out. Uh, then in the 13th position, it's going to be Edward Packett ahead of Eshraf El Haddad. And then we get to the Am field with Lewis Boubier currently on pole there. Tony Norgren alongside him. James Slates is in third out of uh, Dirk Bouts. That's Jasper Sarks and Jasper uh, Yamas Astamoinen. Timo McKeon seventh out of Craig Shield. Glenn Humberstone and Kurt Van Hoenacker round out the top ten. Connor Botting, championship leader, down in 11th. Surprising to see him down there. Navarro de Boiva uh, is next ahead of... 
at Jürgen Knockout, then Alistair Hatcher, Anthony Letts, his 15th out of Euron Reigns, Carl Pearce, and Mark Oliver running at your 18 car am field. The numbers aren't exactly dropping. 48 have gotten on to the starting grid here uh, for this one. We have got a proper full formation lap to deal with as well uh, before we get into the 25 minute race but uh, yeah 48 cars it's still a very very well populated field uh, even towards the halfway stage now of this championship yeah it's, it's awesome to see really how we've been able to maintain such high attendance uh, across all three categories it's it's awesome because yeah while grid size definitely doesn't determine the quality of the racing it is nice to just to have a nice populist grid and it, it will definitely spice things up with uh, sort of a big grid it is a slightly longer circuit here at watkins glen it is around about a minute 40 for a lap uh, so lap traffic probably not going to be uh, as prevalent as we've seen before with tracks you know sort of like the red bull ring and Interlagos as well played a, a pretty big factor uh, in that as well. But definitely look out for it, uh, as I said, uh, with sort of midway through race two, maybe as well towards the back end uh, of race one. But yeah, we've got loads of keen drivers ready to give it their rule. And it just makes for some really competitive racing. You know, we've had fights all the way, uh, you know, for, for first place, all the way down to sort of, you know, 13, 14 places uh, in class. And it is, you know, one of those things that are really good to see when you can look anywhere on the grid and have action. Absolutely. Uh, Connor Botton going to be involved in a lot of it as well. 11th place down in the AM field, which is a disappointing qualifying for him. I'm uh, just wondering really uh, uh, about his chances in this race and just how easy it's going to be to make up positions ar around a circuit like this. Because we mentioned earlier, it's quite twisty. Not many straights to utilise. Uh, and clearly he is struggling at least a little bit for pace uh, based on that qualifying performance. It could be a very important 25 minutes coming up for, uh, for the AM championship leader. Yeah, for sure. Connor Botting, he said last time out at Interlagos, sort of, he wasn't expecting at all to be in the championship lead. But of course, with uh, his teammate, Louis Bubia, having a bit of, you know, misfortune here and there and uh, just being able to capitalise well, being sort of that consistent driver that's not quite stand out in terms of pace, but always there, always ready to deliver. He uh, found himself leading the championship and he wants to carry that momentum forward and he's going to have a very hard job of doing it uh, here today. He just needs to get his head down and move forward. There's a couple of overtaken opportunities, but again, only time will tell he has got this race as long as he gets himself sort of into that top 10 he definitely has a good chance in race two certainly a top four forming in the pro championship of the imb world series gt3 championship and three of them are in the top three of this uh, of this qualifying session and in this race as well stuart reynolds back in the pack a little bit he'll need to do some work but it's neil butler versus Elliot Ahelia on the front row together. Alvin Kjellberg in the BMW, and one of those BMWs just in behind, looking to have a way through as well. Side by side up towards the line. Neil Butler once again going to be in control of the pro field. As the lights come on, he waits just a moment before releasing and going down towards turn number one. Elliot Ahelia tucks in behind with Kjellberg also single filing it. The top four single file up towards turn number one and through turn one for the first time. Stuart Reynolds is on the outside line through turn one of Callum Beamant there looking to get inside the top five. He has managed that as the best performing Mercedes from qualifying and he'll continue that through the race as well as John Williams gets the pro Anfield underway now as well ahead of Didier Vlamink and Lucas Romano who's already making a dive for second inside line tries to tuck in behind John Williams here to get through he won't be able to do that had to take a bit of a tight line through turn one and so won't be able to do it there but it's BMWs everywhere at the front of the field in Pro-Am as in Am Lewis Boubier once again gets the field underway after another pole position for him he's starting to string some races together and it's a good dream start for him really a couple of car lengths already over the likes of Tony Norgram in the field it looks like though a fairly flowing turn one has done the field a whole load of good and everybody's gotten through there cleanly yeah, at least uh, for now, we still have to wait for the lap one. Uh, Chaos to settle in here side by side between uh, Alvin Kjellberg and Elliot Hellyer trying to get himself to the inside of the next right hand. Is he going to be able to get that BMW stopped to the outside? Goes the Porsche of Elliot Hellyer using the full extent of the circuit. Louis Gardner as well won uh, last time out with Interlagos. is up there in P4 this time around. Alvin Kjellberg, the long way round of the Porsche of Elliot Hellyer. This is music to the ears of Neil Butler, who is now starting to career away. Absolutely fantastic as Glenn Humberstone qualified inside the top 10 just about but I'm afraid he's got a round there at the outer loop the uh, big looping right hander at the uh, far end of the circuit down there at turn five 
And so he's dropped to the back. So is Arjus Jumantas after an incident. But that was very opportunistic for Alvin Kjellberg, who has got through on Elliot Hellyer. Now, this is uh, how Jumantas got things wrong. It's going to be up the hill towards the left-hander at uh, turn nine. So easy to, uh, to get things wrong on the uphill there. It's a really difficult corner. And for some reason, I don't know the physics of why, but the car's always really oversteer there, no matter what you're driving and I don't know why but uh, but it's certainly a problem it's caught out Yamantas there this is a number of side-by-side uh, -side moves going on now towards the bus stop chicane it's always a brave one just see it from Harry Wills there uh, making a move he uh, will uh, stay in front and stay in 13th position I believe that was as uh, Stuart Reynolds has also made that move on Callum Beeman as well side-by-side -side back in the pack for the AMS as well it's uh, it's all happening in the opening moments it is they're trying to make a, uh, you know, sort of trying to make the most of the uh, sort of the early uh, race carnage. Everyone nice and bunched up together. It's the perfect opportunity to start making some moves and definitely proving that despite the twist and turning nature of Watkins Glen, you can definitely get some moves done. Here's Louis Gardner down to P7 after being up in P4 not too long ago. He's nearly getting sent by Kenny Harriman down and towards the hill. This is what happened. A big moment through the bus stop chicane that through goes uh, Stuart Reynolds uh, just going past him there. And and, well, got himself a slowdown for good measure uh, going through there. And I said, definitely before the race, if you're not careful, that bus of chicane will spit you out. It's not a uh, not a particularly nice chicane, as uh, we've got Jesper Sarks with big front-end damage here, I'm afraid, and it's going to be at the bus stop chicane. It's uh, going to be an action point throughout the day, you'd imagine. Oh, and it's onto Ooh. the grass on the way in, and a big hit into the wall as well, the right-hand side. He oh, spits back out onto the circuit, and thankfully... Everybody avoids him, but that's a, a very big hit there. Normally, we see actually the curbs being the problem down at the bus stop chicane, but I guess a uh, crash on the way in won't help your cause either, and you do need to mind out for that inside wall. You do, definitely. Uh, it's not something you'd expect people to hit by any means, but hey ho, we're back to live action. The fight for fifth amongst some of the pro arms. John Williams leads the way ahead of Lucas Romano. John Williams on a string of form of BMW going slowly to the uh, uh, left hand side of the circuit. This is Chris Thacker, unfortunately, having a bit of a moment. Going to take a look as to what happened to the Eclipse Racing Team car and going through the penultimate corner. He's going to maybe just run a little bit. Well, not even that, just the car loop round again. The sort of the undulation of the circle or whatever happened. Happens. The the cars just don't seem to want to cooperate going through that left-hander. I'm not sure there's not a technical issue going on there actually for Chris Thacker. I don't know quite what it might be, but uh, but it looked a bit technical uh, to me. But we'll uh, we'll see. It's the fight for fifth place, not dying down in Pro. Nearly two sets of two wide here. Yuho Hooten and diving to the inside, trying to defend from Panterman. Nearly went into Stuart Winers just up in front there as, as Winers himself is trying to make a move on Jeremy De Boivy. You can see just up in front, side by side again uh, towards the toe of the boot between them all. Actually, that's making good progress, by the way, in these opening moments for the Amfield. Connor Botting has uh, started around this kind of area. The likes of Craig Seal and and Connor Pearce and also your own Reigns all in there so he's managed to get himself out of there let's see what's happened to Stuart Reynolds here and it's a spin at Ooh. the top of the hill at turn nine he's going to get hit as well by the Porsche and hit again by Chris Chatterton that's not good news for Stuart Reynolds who is of course right up there in third in the championship that is, uh, again, and, and for sure, Reynolds as well, the last two uh, races, last two rounds, sorry, he's taken his drop score on, on both occasions. And to have another crash, that got very uh, close for comfort between Michael Patterman and, oh, it's still going in uh, to the braking zone. Just seems to have got right hand down by the Mercedes to his left hand side. And he definitely is not going to be too happy about that one, that is for sure. That was with Yuho Hootenen, and neither of them are going to be particularly impressed with each other. It all looked a bit unnecessary, but um, there we are. Patterman goes around and drops down towards the back as there's a mighty train here for what is about sixth place in the pro field. Stuart Reynolds now involved with and that's somewhere. Hooten and once again involved and this is the tightest line you've ever seen into the bus stops game but he's made it work. And he's into eighth position. Hacker not able to hold him back by the looks of things. Hooten and up a position and he'll uh, hope to stay there as well. It looks like he will for those next couple of moments. We go back to Lots of Timo McKeown here trying to make a move on Dirk Bounce. Won't be able to do it, but just look at the gap that the leaders have got. Luz Bibier and Tony Norgon are absolutely gone from this, from this group already.
Yeah, but look at Connor Bossing from 11th now up into 6th place. So the championship leader trying to limit the damage uh, uh, for uh, race number one. And it puts him in a pretty good place for race two as well. So reverse the top 10. He will be uh, on the uh, third row of the, uh, of the grid down. Uh, and uh, yeah, he is going to perfectly poise himself to be in a pretty good uh, position for race two if it stays as it is still obviously going to try and uh, work his way forward of course but yeah our race leaders are doing mightily well uh, in the opening stages but still a fair way to go in this race chatterton has got no front end to it he was one of those that hit Stuart Reynolds as he span around at turn nine and, uh, and Reynolds indeed is back to the pit lane now though as you say it looked like it might be another drop round in a row for Stuart Reynolds I'm afraid it goes Thomas Reiter and nothing that Chatterton can do. You can be sure that that big gaping hole in the front end of that BMW, well, it's just got bigger and it's uh, it's certainly not helping him uh, in this uh, in this race. You can be sure that the likes of Jonas Dreyer, Andy Miller and Kieran Smart and all of these guys, when they stop fighting, they'll be getting through on Chris Chatterton pretty soon, you'd imagine. Yeah, that BMW does not look to be in the best of conditions. Here's Michael Patterman uh, trying to recover from his awkward bit of shenanigans uh, a little bit earlier on with Juho Hutenen, uh, and is trying to get himself ahead of Packer to the outside of the bus stop. Again, it's definitely brave, but uh, his Porsche uh, seems poised enough to just go around the outside and continue on with uh, his day. Also, the fight between Craig Schill and Van Hoenacker uh, for the back end of the top 10 amongst the Ams, and still fairly close between a number of people. Absolutely, Craig Shield trying to apply the pressure here. Just ahead of uh, Carl Pierce, by the way. I realise I, realize I said Connor Pierce earlier. I don't know why. Uh, that's not his name. But uh, uh, but anyway, he's at 11th at the moment, just behind uh, these guys. Craig Shield just looking up the inside there of Van Hoenacker to the outer loop there, but wasn't able to stick your nose down the inside. It's pretty difficult to do that, really. As Connor Boeing making more progress into the top five. I've, I thought he was going to struggle here the, uh, with the nature of this circuit, but he's uh, not showing any signs of struggling at all with within 10 minutes here and he is into the top five already with some small gaps up to maybe even the podium if he's uh, really going to uh, his skates on here as Liam Ahern goes around at turn nine claiming a few victims as well just like the chicane and that was Lewis Boubier who had to well not quite take avoiding action but uh, that could have got ugly for everybody involved this is how Liam Ahern went around and once again it's just one of these things at, at this corner for whatever reason yeah, it's looping around before he even gets sort of to the exit, hits the barrier. And it wasn't like he went, you know, sort of drastically over the curb. There's Greg Schill uh, going around, unfortunately, for him. But, yeah, it, it wasn't even like it was, you know, too much curb or too much exit curb or, you know, tapping the grass or anything. The car was looping around based just off its momentum. And that is unfortunate for Craig Schill collecting the Audi, nearly rolling back into the path of yet another one. Uh, and, yeah, coming off the hill, that is uh, definitely suboptimal, to say the least. The Audi peels its way into the pit lane for some damage repair. And here's Elliot Hell, yeah, under pressure still from Alvin Kjellberg. So these two going at it. But look at the gap they've been able to build to Louis Gardner behind. But also look at the progress they're making and cutting away at that gap from Neil Butler. Absolutely. They're not re well, Neil Butler's not really getting away at the moment. But these three, of course, all involved in the top four or so in the championship. And in the top three of this race as well, they're all pushing very hard in the opening exchanges, by the way. Elliot Hoyer and Albin Kjellberg were exchanging positions very regularly, but that's stopped a bit now. Kjellberg trying to apply the pressure and, and get back in front again. We'll see if he can manage it into turn one. He's uh, going to be too far away to manage that as Stuart Reynolds comes out the pit lane just behind these guys. Um, he's looking for points, of course, looking to try and get to the 50% mark of this race and I'm not sure how many laps that's going to require uh, at a circuit like this. It's pretty difficult to work out but um, it's uh, it's going to be quite a few I'd imagine uh, about as I'm trying to do the maths on, on fire maybe 15 laps he maybe need uh, sorry eight, maybe he'll need eight laps as the race is going to be about 15 laps we'll wait and see uh, just how long uh, that's going to uh, uh, take for Stuart Reynolds who will, will need the points of course so we go back to Battle for fifth place in the Amfield. Conor Boeing has not quite gotten away from the likes of Timo McKeown and Jasper uh, uh, Yamas Astamoinen just yet. Anthony Letts just behind them as well, and he's made some really good progress in, in this race. Here's another driver who started outside the top ten and is moving forwards almost at the uh, same pace that Conor Boeing is in the Amfield. 
Just goes to show that qualifying does not tell the full story. It is a hard circuit to hook up, is Watkins Glen, and it, you know all it takes is a small mistake. That is going in a little bit deep there from Timo McEwen. Could allow Yamis Aston Martin to get a pretty compromised run. Here comes Anthony Letts through the middle, three wide. Now going through the S's uphill, Yamis Aston Martin all the way to the right. Oh, oh and he's been tagged as he saved it. It's still pointing the right way. Bit of a tag to the barrier, but he's still carrying on. A bit of tarnished momentum might lose the place to Van Hoenacker. Timo McEwen down to seventh. But Wow, Anthony Letts played that to perfection. Certainly did, but three one at the top of the hill there was uh, never really going to work, and the other two are going to be particularly uh, annoyed with Letts there for, for trying to make a move. But uh, I guess he was in, within his uh, within his rights too. Thomas Dandridge is moving ahead of Kieran Smart there into 11th position. You can just see uh, just in behind there Lee Holmes, who's uh, trying to make an impression as well and towards turn number one for all of these drivers and they continue to close in on, on Chris Chatterton. That, that's Van Hornacker there who has just uh, overtaken Sastamoinen as well by the looks of things. But yeah, so Sastamoinen was the one who ended up in the outside wall of course and Van Hornacker was able to get in front but it doesn't look like this position is going to last too long for the BMW. Yeah, no, it seems like that with the Mercedes just um, doesn't seem to be too stricken by the by the shunt to the barrier. It wasn't too uh, sort of massive, and it was a, a nice-ish angle, uh, so we should be able to carry on with with you know minor discrepancies in terms of pace. So it should be pretty good. Uh, still, this fight rages on between Elliot Hellier and Alvin Kjellberg, with Neil Butler not quite being able to stretch uh, the advantages as you know sort of large as he wanted to. But now we are into the second half of this race. It is crunch time. The pressure is on. Is Kjellberg just holding off that offensive, hoping that they can close the gap to Butler? Well, yeah, it's uh, not really happening for them at the moment. Still one second, and it's staying there. The two Porsches very well matched, Butler and Hellyer. Yeah. It's going to be really exciting to watch those three try and come through the field in the second race. I've been shown, of course, that it's not impossible to make your way through, but when you start embarking on some drivers who are of sim similar ability, as you can see here, it's, it's fairly difficult. Obviously, Chris Chanson has got the big parachute at the front of the field. Sorry, at the front of his car right now, which is not helping him. Um, but uh, but either way, uh, there's uh, there's a battle going on there. There's also one for Pro Am Honours right now. John Williams currently leads, but Lucas Serrano is in second. These two won two in the championship as well. This is increasingly becoming a bit of a two-horse race in Pro Am with Liam Ahern well down the field again. Yeah, unfortunate for Liam at home, but between these two, it's awesome uh, because we saw a similar sort of display at Interlagos with, between Lucas Romano uh, and John Williams. Williams has just been on a really good run of form. He took both victories at Interlagos, but countless of hours of pressure. And here's Elliot Hell yeah, man in wow. second place, leader of the Pro Championship, having a bit of an off, only fallen to third thanks to the gap that they had back to Callum Beeman and Louis Gardner. But it was into the bus stop chicane again, and that is a Big, big shame and a big mistake for him. Oh, he just bounces over those curves and he does make fairly hefty contact with the wall. Although he may have gotten away with that. We'll wait and see. He's still third. We'll see if... Oh, it's very loose on the rear end again here. And here comes Colin Beeman, surely, as he comes out of the toe and in towards uh, the heel now at turn eight. We'll see if he can uh, make his way down the inside. It, there's a lot of space on the outside here for Elliot Hoyer to run around the outside. He's going to use it. There it is on the left-hand side, but Beeman looks like he's got him anyway. Up the hill towards turn nine, very tricky. And he's going to hold the inside line. And they're still going to remain side by side between the two. Louis Garner's going to try and get involved as well. Round the outside from Callum Beeman through the penultimate corner. He's very wide and sideways in the Porsche as well. Here comes Gardner down the inside of Hellier as well. The two of these having a bit of an exchange in the text chat earlier on. We'll see how that translates on track. As the two almost rub panels. Oh, they do rub panels down the straight. They're definitely not going to be impressed with each other. Gardner shoves out wide. Elliot Hellier, who's going to be pretty furious, really. Thomas Reiter goes through as well. And Elliot Hellier all of a sudden is outside the top five. Oh, how quick it can change and it was the small mistake luckily for Kjellberg he didn't have to be collected in that skirmish Elliot Hell yeah tried his best in order to thwart off the offence from uh, from Beeman and Gardner and Thomas Reiter was really opportunistic still uh, is doing so on the back of Louis Gardner trying to get himself up into P4 but Elliot Hell yeah is having a really tough time you would have thought he might have been able to get away with it Chatterton with the massive parachute that is now his or well the lack thereof of a front bumper is really holding him back and 
he's uh, well decided to take the safe option, which was to back out of the chicane entirely. And Dre off the road at the outer loop as well there at turn five, I'm afraid. So that's uh, gone wrong for him. Let's see over the bus stop chicane, and this is going to be con co to be continued. Oh, into the wall as well. Oh, dearie me. Oh. This is all uh, not nice for Jonas Dre, I'm afraid. He drops down to 15. Elliot Hellier is da back, down back in pit lane, though. Something has gone on here, and something's gone on to Timo McKeon as well, who's going really slowly through the final corner. I can tell you why. Oh, yeah, it's gone in, back into the pit lane. Not sure why at the moment. It's a connection issue. It looks like it might have been. Well, partly. Spins the wrong way and then just escapes back to pit lane. He is going to be really unhappy uh, with how this race has ended up transpiring. And let's not forget, his drop week is currently at the one. I think it was the Red Bull ring that he had to miss. Or was it Hockenheim? I think it was Hockenheim. He had to miss the races at Hockenheim, and so basically he can't afford mistakes this season because uh, every point from here on in, in, into the end is going to count. So a zero will be chalked up as a zero, and he will lose ground. Yeah, I was just about to allude to that with uh, without how you and the fact that the gap uh, at the front of the field is only 14 points uh, between himself and Neil Butler. He cannot afford any loss of time at all. His uh, Holmes versus uh, Kieran Smart side by side on the uh, back straight towards the bus of chicane, and there is Holmes ahead of Kieran Smart and up into eighth place. Now Chris Janetton holding firm up there in P12. Don't know how oh. that BMW is hanging on. There's Lee Holmes, unfortunately going in a bit too deep into the bus of chicane. Okay. Yeah, so briefly was up into eighth place. That was very wide and well, he just carefully re-entered the circuit really um, rather than uh, smashing into everyone which I'm sure they appreciate as off the road for Jonas Dreyer again he's not enjoying the outer loop today uh, and back off on the short layout that's the cut through you could just see on the right hand side there that they do when NASCAR come the, the uh, for, for the shorter circuit but Back to the front now with just over six minutes to go. It's going to be four laps here for Alvin Kjolbo to find a way through on Neil Butler. Butler currently second in the standings. Neilberg just fourth, but there's only nine points between them. There's going to be some very important points exchanged here as well. So uh, Kjolbo versus Butler could get very interesting in these final four laps. I hope it does because Alvin Kjellberg had a pretty shaky start to the season, showed uh, incredible glimmers of pace but couldn't quite uh, do it justice in terms of results. Now is back onto that run of form that we know uh, we can see. Uh, from Kjellberg and if he can take a win uh, tonight that definitely would be a big statement and a big, pu a big push through uh, in the championship standings but he's not got long left to do it only a number of laps through the bust of chicane Neil Butler has seemed so composed for the majority if not the entirety of this race so far keeping the likes of Alvin Kjellberg and Elliot Hellyer at an arm's length but now Kjellberg has sort of been re uh, released to catch him by himself he's really dropped that gap down quite significantly uh, quite uh, swiftly uh, as well, then you have to say it is only a matter of time until we see the Swede go for the move. It certainly is, or at least attempt it. We say that, but is it going to be one of those where he just waits it out for a few moments before going for this? We'll wait and see, but there's not long left, just five minutes and three laps when they get to the line as well. Kjellberg has not got much time. He's really throwing it into these corners, though, and he threw it in too much there at turn eight. He goes very, very wide. He probably didn't get an off track for that, though. The extra tarmac you get there on the uh, on the uh, left hand side is uh, vast, really, and you don't get an off track for it sometimes, or very often in iRacing. I don't know why they added it in real life, and I don't know why that's a thing in iRacing either, but uh, but it is. So Navarro de Boiva has just gotten things all wrong through the penultimate corner. Let's hope nobody else was caught up in this. I don't think there was, so uh, they can can continue down in the am field. They've seen a lot of attrition today, and so have all three. That really, it's been a difficult race, but Arvin Kjellberg is trying to make it his right now. Three laps to go, and uh, he's no closer really to making this move. No, unfortunately not. He's sort of just sitting there uh, in the wings waiting for his uh, opportune moment. We saw the gap come down 
uh, down the, the, the pit straight towards T1. He did close quite significantly. Defensive goes Neil Butler, so definitely not confident in his car straight on speed. Here comes Kjellberg to the left-hand side. The outside of the bus stop chicane is going to be brave. It's going to be bold. He's going to do it. And oh. there's Alvin Kjellberg into the race. He goes off the circuit, though. Neil Butler comes back underneath him in towards the outer loop. Kjellberg hangs on to it, though. And he uh, is definitely going to be uh, counting his lucky stars with that one. Neil Butler is going to be slightly furious, I think, as to uh, how the Swede was able to hang on to that position. But Kjellberg's got it done, and now he's uh, going to try and set his eyes forward. Well, firstly, I'm amazed that that wasn't a slowdown there for Albin Kjellberg, who's continuing on. And, uh, yeah, second of all, that might well be talked about after the race. Is that one going to be allowed? Because it was certainly off the road there from Albin Kjellberg at the bus stop chicane. It was very brave, but looks like he's done it as Thomas Dandridge has gone off the road at the outer loop was, uh, once again as well. This is going to be one of those... Uh, well, no, it's not a continuation, actually, from the bus stop. It's just a losing of the rear end. The BMW had enough, and he could not quite save it in time. Into the wall and uh, into the inside of the turn there, just to try and get out of everybody's way. Uh, but Jonas Trey will pick up points for 13th position, at the very least, as this side-by-side -side going on back here. It's a very tight line for Chris Packer. Uh, sorry, that's Michael Patterman down the inside of Francois Pedro. Pedro goes very wide indeed and uh, he will lose that place to Michael Patman who's now up into eighth still Williams and Romano battling up, to, up towards the front of Pram as well half a second between them a lot less here though look at this Neil Butler on the outside line through turn three almost he's going for it into the bus stops again with lap traffic involved as well this could very much get busy as Kjellberg throws it into the bus stop chicane he was having absolutely none of that but he's going to be slowed up by Navarro de Boiver, I think that might well be on the outside line. Neil Butler will slip through as well. It's going to be final lap when they get to the line here, and Butler's going to have one more chance. I just don't know whether he's going to be able to execute it at the bus stop chicane like Kjellberg did last lap. Yeah, well, you, you would argue that Kjellberg didn't quite execute it to the standards that Neil Butler would quite be so happy with, but Kjellberg definitely does not look... Uh, sort of willing to let this position go easy. We saw how aggressive he was at the throw-in of the uh, bar stop chicane, even now weaving to the right-hand side of the circuit to break the slipstream uh, that Neil Butler is receiving. That gap is now growing to at least a couple of car lengths. So Kjellberg, if he just break, breaks free, really, uh, of sort of the optimal slipstream range, the slingshot, Neil Butler has given it his absolute everything. But as long as Kjellberg can sort of keep it at arm's length, there's not much that Neil Butler can do in terms of sending one on the brakes, especially with how quick we saw Kjellberg to be down the straight. Yeah, one or two mistakes on this last lap now from Neil Butler, who's just starting to fall away. It looks like it could be Kjellberg's to lose now. See. Uh make their way over the line again for one minute to go and one lap to go as well in this race it is indeed going to be a 15 lap race so eight needed to be completed to get the points and uh, Connor Botting actually has been in the pit lane for a good while here in the AM category not entirely sure why but um, everybody below him uh, is not going to uh, get points so that's eight of the 48 uh, scoring zero uh, from this one I believe this is the pro-am fight though John Williams versus Lucas Romano. This one could well have a little bit of a story at the end here. Fingers crossed. Uh, there is sort of an almighty send from Lucas Romano. Dean Timms, uh, unfortunately, into the pit. They're not reigning champion, of course, from last season. But onto the final lap, this could be the final chance, really, for Lucas Romano to mount an attack versus John Williams. Could it be three races in a row for uh, the number eight? Let's see. Romano gaining very, very quickly, but it's going to have to be a brave one at the bus stop to Kane. He's going to pull to the outside line. Let's see if he's got it. He's not far enough alongside. Williams is going to throw it in there. Romano put off by his line, I think, a little bit, and so will fall away just that bit through the bus stop to Kane. John Williams might well have this now, and it could well be three in a row as Neil Butler's oh. off the road here. Neil Butler has gone completely in his chase of Armin Kjellberg. He's gone, and so we have... Four contenders in the top five earlier on in the championship. On three of them now have fallen way outside the top ten. Neil Butler goes for a spin out of turn seven. Big implications there as he falls outside the top ten as well. 
Albin Kjellberg, though, with no such problems. He's going to come through the final corner to win here at Watkins Glen. And what a big step forward this could be in the context of this championship. He's going to win it by four and a half seconds out of Callum Beeman and Louis Gardner, who are going to be wondering how the hell they just ended up on the podium here in this race. John Williams won't be wondering such similar things in the pro-am field, you can feel, because he's fought hard for this one ahead of Lucas Serrano. There he is in the background. But John Williams is going to go free for free in the pro-am field by winning once again here at Watkins Glen. And for the third race in a row, it's Lucas Romano who is runner-up to him in the am field as well. It's going to be Louis Bouvier who is stringing a good uh, load of results together as well right now. It's another race one victory for him. His third of the season, and in the other two, he was in second place. It's been a very, very good start to the season for Louis Bouvier, and it continues here with race one victory at Watkins Glen by a good seven seconds. Very exciting ends to a very dramatic race here in, uh, in race one. Wow, what a finish that was. And also in the AMs, uh, Connor Botting didn't quite make it to the checkered flag, so won't be uh, scoring any points. I don't think maybe he might just uh, was able to get to the threshold. This is close between Bounce and Let's on the run to the line. Uh, unfortunately, nothing quite uh, fabricating for the Porsche. But yeah, Lewis Bubio is on a fantastic run of form. So too is John Williams. But Neil Butler, Elliot Hellyer, our top two in the championship, really not having the best of race ones. It looked to at least be second place for Butler, but he completely bottled it, threw it all away. Now down to 11th place, which I think is around about 20 or 22 points uh, in terms of uh, championship points. So Alvin Kjellberg is getting a big advantage relative to Helia and Butler and Reynolds. And he is really now starting to sort of settle in and uh, get himself into that championship fight. Far, far more pressing thing for Butler is that he won't benefit from the reverse grid. Uh, Alvin Kjellberg certainly will. Uh, well, he won't either, I guess. He's going to set to the back. But he has won race one, at least. Callum Beam and Louis Gardner round out the podium with Thomas Wright and Kenny Hermans in the top five. Kieran Smart, sick out of Andy Miller. Are you sure uh, recovered from that lap one spin to get to eighth? Uh, Chris Charrington, ninth, despite all his damage. Harry Wills with the first top ten I can remember from him all season. It's a good run out from him. Neil Butler drops to 11th on that last lap. Lee Holmes. Uh, finishes in 12th with Thomas Dandry is not making it to the flag. Nimitz Jonas Dreyer, uh, Elliot Hellyer, but they will get points. Stuart Reynolds will not and will have to start from the back of the field in race two. John Williams will be starting from 10th. He's won race one here ahead of Lucas Romano. Very narrow margins there. Stuart Reynolds at third place ahead of Jeremy De Boiver and Juho Hootenen, who's in the top five. Felix Pearl will be sixth ahead of uh, Michael Patterman, then Francois Pedro and Edward Packer. Then it's Dean Timms who will be first on the reverse grid. I think he had to splash and dash on the last lap. I think he underfueled by one lap in that one. Liam Ahern just missed out on the reverse grid again. He's losing more points and losing touch in the Pro-Am Championship. Dide Vlamink will not score points from that one. And neither will Chris Thacker or Esra Haddad, who didn't even start. Louis Poubier will be winning in Am, though, ahead of Tony Norgran. Big gaps here. James Slates was 18.7 seconds down in third. Dirk Bouts, four out of Anthony Letts. Then Yama Sastamoinen in sixth. Kevin Hornacker, seventh of Jerome Reigns. And Craig Schill, the final driver on the lead lap. The Varada Boy one lap down in tenth, but he will get a reverse grid pole. Carl Pierce will be 11 out of Jürgen Nocker and Connor Botting and Timo McKeon. All of those will score points, whereas Alistair Hatcher... Mark Oliver, Glenn Humberstone and Jasper Sarks will not. Drop it. So that is your race one. And we do have a couple of drivers waiting for a bit of a chat. Oh. Do that uh, before we go to a break. Albin Kjellberg joins us. Albin, welcome to the booth. Good to have you with us. Thank you. Uh, race victory here in race one. Um, second time you've uh, won race one here this season. But this was a very hard, hard fought one. Just tell us a little bit about your battle with there uh, with Neil Butler towards the end of that race. It was a great race, yeah. Um, I tried to get uh, get into P1 as soon as possible, and that didn't really work because I lost the toe to Neil. But uh, but then I let Elliot pass, and he pulled me along. And then I think Neil hit the wall in the last corner, which uh, which slowed him down quite a bit, and I managed to catch up to him. And then once you're in the toe, it's it's not that hard to actually overtake here, which is great. <laughs> it's a really fun track as well. Very, very helpful, certainly, um, when you're uh, when you're trying to make moves, and it will be helpful for you in race two as well. You'll be starting from tenth place in the reverse grid. Uh, just how easy or how difficult do you think it's going to be to make your way through the field at this track? 
Uh, it's, it's probably going to be quite hard because there are some quick people ahead of me. Harry is on pole, for example, so uh, that could be a struggle. Uh, well, let, last let, last season it didn't end very well here. In the let's, well, the let's hope that doesn't happen again as well. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, we, we look forward to uh, seeing it. Alvin, congratulations on uh, race one victory and good luck for the second race coming up. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Alvin Kjellberg. Victorious overall in race one and the victorious in race one also was john williams in the pro am category uh, john welcome to the booth this is becoming quite familiar three in a row for you now you must be uh, very pleased with how the last few races are going for you and long may continue mate long may continue absolutely uh you, you're fighting hard with lucas romano though how do, how do you think the two of you are going to get through the field in race two mate i'm i'm just glad i managed to get a bit of a gap at the beginning like uh iRacing's damage model could have killed both of us, especially with the walls and that. I don't, I don't think we saw what happened to you both. What, were you just scraping the wall a lot or what happened? No, it's the bus stop in it. It's the bus stop and obviously ah. I'm just glad I managed to get a distance because, you know, if anybody hits anyone on the in these cars, man, it crumbles and it's no one's fault. Uh, yeah, that is, uh, that is true, uh, I, I guess. Uh, as, as I say though, good, good luck for the second race coming up. It's going to be uh, very, very interesting indeed, very exciting. So uh, thanks very much for joining us. Congratulations on uh, on race one victory. And uh, and yeah, we'll uh, look forward to seeing how you get on in race two. I'll hopefully see you again in race two, boys. <laughs> Let's hope so. Uh, thanks very much, John Williams. Uh, race one winner in the Pro-Am category as well. Uh, that's going to be it for race one though. We're going to take a very short break. And uh, when we return... Race 2, 50 minute reverse grid race here at Watkins Glen uh, will be coming your way. So uh, make sure you join us for that. Uh, we'll be taking a quick break now though. Stay, uh, stay with us.
Do you feel your bones start to shake? Do you feel your bones start to shake?
Welcome back to Watkins Glen for the second race of round five of the IMB World Series GT3 Championship EU. We're setting up for the second race and at the end of which we'll be at the halfway stage of this season. Very excited race, uh, very exciting race one uh, and very excited to get race two underway. My name is Hugh I'm alongside Zach Sweeney still. And uh, it was a good race one, uh, Zach. We had some good drama in there. A late pass by Albin Kjellberg for the win. A battle all the way to the line in Pro-Am. I'd imagine we're going to see, or, or at least hope to see, something similar uh, in this uh, in this second race. Yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, I'm looking forward to race two. Always look forward to race two. You know, 50 minutes, the pit stops, the reverse grid. It is always a recipe for a good race. But yeah, race one always sets the bar high. It's hard uh, for race two to meet that standard. And yet, week in, week out, we are uh, always uh, pleasantly uh, surprise when race two does somehow uh, manage to reach that standard but really looking forward to it we've obviously got neil butler and elliot hell yeah way out of place not even you know in the top 10 benefiting uh from the reverse grid keeping them inside that top 10 they are out of it i think elliot hell yeah starting down in p15 neil butler p11 uh, and alvin kjellberg there in, in p10 able to sort of make his way forward a little bit quicker so in terms of a championship going into the halfway point of the season there's some massive massive storylines starting to form up but also just take a step out of it and just look at the Racing action, the rivalry that's starting to form between John Williams and Lucas Romano as well. Louis Bubier, hopefully he can get another race to sort of hooked up under his belt touch with that that sort of uh, fabricates itself, especially for him in his championship. There is a lot uh, uh, and a lot to look forward to. There certainly is uh, a lot to look forward to uh, right now, including race two. But yeah, the, the new standings have certainly had a big change. Albin Kjellberg is now leading them by only three points ahead of uh, Elliot Hellyer, then Neil Butler is only 11 points adrift at the moment. Stuart Reynolds does need a big race though, and he'll be starting down from 16th position. Uh, that's uh, not going to be particularly ideal for him. He has got a, a, a pretty nice score of 79 to fall back on though, um, which may well help him. The maximum he can score is 100, so um, that's a, you know not a bad score to fall back on. Um, but uh, but either way, he's going to have to. Uh, well, he is going to fall back on it, but even if he wins this second race, so. Uh, this race isn't going to particularly matter for him, but that just uh, a good race here will just provide him a bit more of a safety net once again throughout the remainder of the season. But um, once again, Stuart Reynolds is going to be falling back on that one. As you mentioned, he's been uh, using it every single week uh, pretty much since, we, uh, since we've had uh, two races to count a drop week with. So um, it's, been, uh, it's been very interesting uh, so far. It's going to be a good race. Let's see how it goes. Uh, uh, Harry Wills will be on pole ahead of Chris Jarrett, that's going to be Ayush Yomantas third, ahead of Andy Miller. Kieran Smart will be running up the top five with Kenny Herman sixth. Thomas Wright and Louis Garner will be on row four together. And Callum Beeman and Albin Kjellberg, race one winner, rounding out the top ten. Neil Butler just outside of that top ten. Championship contender, of course. Lee Holmes will be 12th ahead of Thomas Dandridge, Jonas Dreyer and Stuart Reynolds. Can't see Elliot Hellyer on there right now, which is a shame. I don't know quite why. Uh, he's not connected at the minute, but uh, uh, but uh, yeah, might well be missing this one. Dean Timms will be on polo for the pro arms out of Edward Packer. Then it's going to be Francois Pertrell and Michael Patterman on row two. Felix Pearl will be rounding up the top five with Hugo Houghton and um, in sixth, Jeremy Dubois, the seventh, and if it's Stuart Wannis, then it will be Lucas Romano and John Williams, the championship rivals. 
on row five together. Liam Ahern, another championship contender, will be 11th. D. Dave Lamming, 12th. Uh, and he'll just be ahead of Chris Thacker and Nasher Vell, her dad, on that final row. Then it's going to be your own reigns. In, oh, excuse me, not your own reigns. It's Navarro de Boiva uh, and then Craig Schill on the front row. Then it's your own reigns. Kurt van Hoernacker is fourth, ahead of Yama Sester Moynen. Anthony Letts is in sixth position, ahead of Dirk Bouts. James Slates is eighth. Tony Norgren and Louis Bouvier round out row five. Then it's Carl Pearson, Jürgen Knockout. Round out the top 12. Then Connor Botting and Timo McKeown will show uh, will share the next row uh, together. Then it will be Alistair Hatcher, 15th under Mark Oliver. Glenn Humberstone and Jasper Sharks rounding out your AM field. But I can tell you that three drivers have failed to uh, actually get underway for the formation lap here. So I'm uh, not sure what they're going to do about that. Um, the two Du Boivers and DJ Vlaminck also. Uh, not there, as well as Elliot Hoyer, who's not got to the start. And that is a real shame here, Zach. It could spell the end of his championship charge, really, if we think about it dramatically. Yeah, I mean, for Elliot Hoyer, he's, you know, he was one uh, sort of that outlier that we saw coming into the season at once, showed some really good uh, pace at the press week. Um, and coming into the season sort of as an unknown, we haven't seen him before yet in this championship, especially last season. Uh, and he really impressed in terms of his pace finally managed to string some good results together and really you know make a name for himself and now falling back uh to yet another round of naught and that is that is going to count as naught he's got nothing now to fall back on at all and if he wants even the remotest slimmest of chance in this championship he's going to have to fight back and really deliver uh, on the final half of the season but it's a shame because even to score some points in this race would be better than nothing but unfortunately for him he's not been able to take the start for whatever reason but that is definitely going to be music to the ears of Albin Kjellberg uh, and Neil Butler a sight for sore eyes for him after sort of a shambles of race one maybe a hope for redemption for Stuart Reynolds as well to get himself sort of re-motivated back into the ambition for a championship charge and but fairly hell yeah yeah absolutely going he is not seen anything from him in text chat. I can only assume that he has just departed uh, in uh, in a bit of anger, I'm afraid, and um, because uh, because yeah, not heard from him and it didn't go great for him in race one, I'm afraid. So he's uh, he's going to be falling back on points quite dramatically uh, as a result of uh, of that one, and that's a, a real shame for him. But it's going to be Harry Wills on pole here, Zach. Just quickly, just. How can he go in this race? How far can he, how long can he stay there for? Oof, interesting. I mean, Harry Wills is not a slow driver by any means. He took a number of race wins last season uh, and was a strong contender. This season, not quite been able to get the ball rolling maybe to the standard he would have wanted to, but was a championship contender last season in the US as well. Uh, I'm not sure if that still stands or whatever, but Harry Wills is a very, very great driver to be gifted this pole position by uh, courtesy of the reverse grid. It's an opportunity he definitely can't pass up no matter what his pace is. No, and he certainly won't be. He'll be in control of the field uh, coming around the final corner and he will choose uh, when to let fly here and uh, when to go for 50 minutes of racing. Race two here at Watkins Glen, the IMB World Series GT3 Championship. The green flag away. Harry Wills will be in control down the straight here. He's going to leave it a lot longer than what we saw in the first race from Neil Butler, that's for sure. As they run down towards turn one, now he goes. He pulls to the racing line and it will be single file into turn one between himself and Chatterton. Are you still and Tess will get down the inside and he'll slot into third out of Andy Miller. Then it will be Kieran Smart. Everybody's gone through here cleanly, thankfully, as the Pro-Ams now get underway. Uh, reigning Am champion Dean Tim's getting them underway here ahead of Edward Packer. Oh. There is a spin there, though. It's for Romano. Romano's involved in it as well as Yuhu Hooten and, and Felix Pearl there as well, I believe. But Lucas Romano certainly was involved and he was down in 12th place now it's a terrible start for him and John Williams has picked up the pieces nicely there as Craig Schill gets it underway in the AM field he will take control there although he's got a bit of blocking to do here as Kurt Van Hornacker and Jerome Reigns have a very good run through turn one and they'll run up the hill over the crest of the hill and there's a slow car here as well off into the grass they'll all make it through by the looks of things it was a clean start in AM certainly cleaner than what we saw in Pro-AM where there's been chaos including for the pole sitter, Dean Timms, who's now down the field. Oh, my word. That is not great, to say the least. That definitely doesn't do it justice, but a lot of carnage. Yamis has the morning trying to eye up a move down and toward the uh, out loop. This long, long right-hander that seemingly goes on forever. A couple of positions to be uh, decided. Mercedes stopped. Is that Juho Hootenen stopped? 
Everton and it is off. It is him. The out to loop. I'm afraid it's been... Oh, and it's T Tony Norgran who's gone around as well. He's corner potting again. Oh, there you can see the out. And he's gone around again. Oh, it's a messy a start. Timo McKeon's there as well. It's Glenn Humberstone. This is Messi in the Pro-Am and Amfields especially. The pros have gotten away with it. But other than that, it's been a messy start. Jerome Reigns has taken the lead there as it's side by side down towards turn and one for some of the pros. Bit of side to side contact as well as Lee Holmes makes his way through. And Kenny Hammers, uh, this is Stuart Reynolds trying to make his way through as they go up the hill. He's already ahead of Callum Beeman somehow, who's gone backwards on this start from ninth place. Reynolds making moves and going forwards. We're trying to get towards Kielberg and Butler, who found themselves in eighth and ninth, respectively. Harry Wills also been able to keep the race D down and towards the bus stop chicane there's Reynolds on the inside Harriman trying to follow him through uh, on Lee Holmes and there's Callum Beeman as well trying to pick up the pieces Yamo Sassamoyne and that Mercedes very quick in a straight line relative to the Audi of Louis Boubier just in front Boubier touch wood again off to a clean start here in race two which is not the same thing that can be said for a number of people he's eyeing up that move on Craig Shield for P4 in a couple of moments time here's Kieran Smart and Neil Butler running side by side in towards the toe Kieran Smart holding firm on that inside line. Neil Butler trying to move forward and try, uh, uh, you know, move that advance versus Alvin Kjellberg. Here's Bouvier to the inside and up into P4. So a pretty good start for the man that's trying to redeem himself in terms of race twos. Yeah, absolutely. He won race two last time out, of course, but the three previous to that were pretty, uh, pretty bad by his standards, I'm afraid. And he's make, making a great start here. Fourth place within four minutes here in the second race at Watkins Glen. That was Kieran Smart, by the way, uh, re-overtaking Neil Butler. Butler was up a position, I believe, and Kieran Smart, I believe, regained that place, or he might have just held on. He certainly lost one recently to Arvin Kjellberg as the front three just begin to get away ever so slightly. Uh, Harry Wills pulling Chris Chanton and Urius Jumantas away from the rest. Thomas Reiter now at the front uh, of that little train there for off place. Louis Garner also trying to get through on Andy Miller who's falling from fourth. Oh and there's contact oh! from Miller. Oh and Kilberg gets involved in it was it? Oh, it was Kieran Smart I believe in the BMW who got involved. It's gymnastics for uh, and, um, oh my goodness for Andy Miller dear me. That was uh, not nice for him. He went off the road up the hill there at two and three and it's had really disastrous consequences for him and Kieran Smart as well it was. Oh my word, I am speechless and I really do hope David Christie actually unmuted himself in terms of uh, you guys at home on the broadcast because yeah, his singing was fabulous and very on theme it must be said. Andy Miller taken off uh, to the moon and well, Ferrari get a little bit fast if you modify their cars, let alone when you completely total them uh, in probably one of the sketchiest parts of the circuit going through the uh, going through the S's. Uh, this is uh, mightily early in terms of where the crash was, but through the S's you cannot have a spin there and expect it to go cleanly it's the one of the quickest uh, sequences of corners the quickest sequence of corners on the circuit uh, and when it's so tight almost blind at some points as well it's so difficult for those behind to actually avoid it you can see there trying to get up the inside oh, it was dear. that bit of contact that sparked it off was the catalyst you have to say then another bit of a tap careers himself across the circuit uses the front end of that bmw i believe of kieran smart just to catapult himself into the air and that is it's it's a sight to, to to say something. Well, yeah, it's uh, it's probably quite a scary onboard from Kieran Smart to be quite honest. But uh, but yeah, you've seen a number of incidents early on in this race, and that's certainly the biggest of them. But Louis Gardner may well come under a bit of fire for that one. I'm afraid that was uh, quite a lot of contact, uh, and quite a lot of it was avoidable as well. You could argue. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was a, a, a real big one. John Williams back to pit lane now as well as Lucas Romano. Romano's already been in the text chat uh, complaining. Well, not complaining. I think complaining about uh, really his situation rather than at, at any individual. Uh, Juho Hootenen may have been involved in that. We haven't seen that incident down towards Turnabon, but Juho Hootenen was clearly involved. And uh, there was four wide on the way in as well, which didn't help, uh, as I'm just seeing. I'm just seeing a still image of this. Uh, you're not at home, of course, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a four wide into turn one, and and, and that's not often going to work at the best of times. Never mind lap one, and everyone's so close together. 
yeah, it's it's always going to be a little bit sketchy, but hey, we've seen uh, quite a chaotic uh, sequence of events uh, here at Watkins Glen. Chris Chatterton also ahead of Harry Wills now for the race lead. Yamantas uh, also uh, following quite closely in tow. This at the moment is the fight for P4 between Alvin Kjellberg, Thomas Reiter, Louis Gardner, and Neil Butler there in P7. Uh, Stuart Reynolds just languishing off the back of them uh, a couple of seconds back, unfortunately. But it seems that Chris Chatterton and Harry Wolves are very, very close together uh, and uh, sort of uh, running away uh, f uh, away from Alvin Kjellberg, but who has now sort of cleared the quote-unquote slower traffic, now has some clear air to try and get onto the back of the uh, of the top three. A number of incidents here that we're, uh, we're not really aware of happening. There's going to be a lot of picking through uh, of driver's thoughts after this because uh, because there's a lot of stuff we haven't seen. Now, here is some of it with Lucas Romano. Now, let's have a little look at this. This is the four wide. I believe that's John Williams down the inside of everybody. There's four wide contact. And then it's the Porsche that goes into Lucas Romano initially. I have a feeling that... Uh, Romano and Hootenen got together again after this, maybe at the outer loop where we saw Hootenen in the wall, but that was the first one, and uh, that was uh, John Williams who was the one steaming down the inside. Lucas Romano has got his repairs done now after nearly six minutes. He's back underway again, but he's two laps behind John Williams, who's only been in, in there for just over three at the moment. So it's a real race uh, uh, of repairing damage at this stage down in the pro-am field anyway. Oh, there's James Slades. That is... Uh, and not the uh, not the best of lines uh, off the exit of turn nine. He's managed to get going again, still in P10, uh, side by side with uh, Liam Ahern and uh, Thacker. Thacker just getting up the inside, going into this left hander, uh, and Ashraf El Haddad also there up and there in P6. But a weird thing happening there for for John Williams, uh, and yeah, uh, certainly not ideal. There's Louis Gardner, uh, who's now uh, turned himself back to the pit lane. Lucas Romano, oh, oh my word, that we oh, thought Chatterton's worse. Uh, was was bad in race one. Lucas Romano it seems that his damage didn't even get repaired at all in the pit lane. Well, I think he just cleared the meatball there and didn't go for any optionals. And now he's uh, realised that that uh, it, this is going to go a lot quicker with the optionals as well. Let's hope that uh, he'll be back out there again in time because let's not forget he's only got what 15 minutes or so now to repair that damage before he starts uh, from the 50% distance uh, rule that he needs to satisfy, of course, as it's side by side between Oyes Jomantas and Alvin Kjellberg, who's already challenging for a podium place. Oh, that's close up the hill there. And Thomas Wright is going to be enjoying this. He's going to come with a full head of steam and maybe challenge into the bus stop chicane as well. Kjellberg's going to be the one on the inside line that went to the bus stop chicane, and he's going to be into third place inside 10 minutes. It's an absolutely fantastic start for the race one winner. Yeah, Alvin Kjellberg has just been so quick. There is Kenny Harriman going slightly slowly, getting overtaken, I believe, by the train of cars uh, amongst Pro uh, Pro Am. Uh, and yeah, that is uh, slightly strange. He's had a bit of an off and pulled back onto the circuit. Oh, that's a bit dodgy. Um, and then going into the S's, he's going to be slow off pace, which again, even itself, is a little bit scary uh, for those behind. This is Alistair Hatcher uh, in the Ferrari going into the penultimate corner. Uh, and just looping around again. A similar mistake we saw a number of times in race one. Uh, and yeah, the same burdens have really followed people down into, uh, into race two as well. It's a, yeah, a strange one. Jürgen Knockhart, what's happened to him? Down in towards turn eight. Well, it's a spin, I'm afraid, on his own. There's already some damage there, so clearly there's another story to tell for him earlier in the race. As Thomas Reiter is looking to apply pressure to Ayus Jomantas at the moment. Neil Butler not too far away from these guys and neither is Stuart Reynolds, importantly, for the championship. Those three are the ones we're focusing on at the moment for the pros as we're getting towards the halfway mark now. Kjellberg, of course, has taken the championship lead after this most recent race. Uh, but, of course, it, it's going to all change after this uh, next one, regardless of results, really, because of the uh, drop rounds and so on and so forth. Kjellberg now really challenging Harry Wolves for second, as in the Amfield. Anthony Lett still leads, and there's a number of battles still going around as well. Dirk Bouch trying to get through on Yama Sester Moynin here for fifth. Yeah, very close to the rear end. Yama Sester Moynin has had some pretty good pace, uh, at least in the opening stages of this race now, up to P5, uh, of course. And yeah, definitely uh, you know, definitely not uh, doing too bad at all, but the Belgian of Dirk Bouch is definitely going to want to get onto the rear end of him. But race one was only 25 minutes long, and we saw how big of a race of... Um, 
uh, of attrition that was. Uh, and yeah, race two, I'm sure, is going to be no different. Double the length. So people are maybe going to try and take a bit of an air of caution. Here's the move for P2 from Alvin Kjellberg. The long way round of the toe. That is beautifully done there from the BMW to the outside of Harry Wills. Now a drag race uh, down the back straight towards the uh, towards the hill. And Alvin Kjellberg, his sights surely have to be on the race lead or nothing. He's looking for the double today. There's no doubt about that. Hasn't managed that this season, despite one previous race one victory. It didn't go so well for him in race two, I'm afraid. He, he finished down in eighth on that day in the, uh, in, the, in, in the race following the one that he won. So, yeah, he's looking for a, a lot better of a performance here, and he's getting one right now. As writers looking uh, on Yeoman Trust right now, all kinds of pressure being put on. John Williams, this is a lot earlier in the race. This is lap three, by the way. So what's happened here? Over the bus stop chicane. Oh, it's going to be a big hit in the onto the wall as well. Into the wall, I should say. And uh, that's big damage for John Williams, who's still down in pit lane after nearly eight minutes now. That is a long time of repairs, of course, in this series. They don't get fast repairs purely because they shouldn't need them. Uh, and that is, uh, yeah, not ideal for him. He needs to get out quickly uh, and, uh, you know, try and get some points for the for, for achieving half distance in this race. It won't be as many. Actually, in the Pro-Ams, there's a fair few missing uh, in terms of attendance. So we might actually be able to pick up some decent points, at least uh, coupled with his race one victory. Should be all right. Uh, and yeah, it's, uh, it's just a shame really that his uh, winning streak has come to an end, but here's a fight uh, up in the uh, up in the programs continuing on. The problem John Williams has got is the fact that he has to be out there again in, in less than 25 minutes to try and get the 50% because there's no point running around there, uh, you know, and, and coming back out for the final two minutes. You're not going to have completed the laps necessary. So um, it's, it's going to be, uh, it, it, it's going to be long. I, I, I've just heard as well Somebody's got one hour long repairs. John Williams has got long one hour repairs. Yes, yeah, so uh, yeah, that's that's uh, well, he's not going to get out in time, is he? He's not even going to get out for the end of the race. So uh, yeah, that's going to be a zero uh, to John Williams. His free race winning streak will come to an end, and this will become his drop week. He won't. He'll uh, score 51 points, I guess. He's going to get 11 further from this one. Lucas Romano's not going to get many more, though, and this is probably going to become his drop week as well, though. We're not going to really learn very much at all about the Pram Championship after this round. We're not at all, and, uh, yeah, for the pair of them, uh, again, we were talking about their rivalry for the last three races through into Lagos and into race one at Watkins Glen, uh, and, uh, yeah, their, their drop week on the same week is now going to be uh, sort of the pressure on for the second half of the season between the pair of them to see who's going to uh, try and get themselves crowned as the champion because Lee Mahan, unfortunately, in third place, is a little bit far off. Uh, so you'd have to say the fight definitely between Romano and Williams. That's going to be an ex exciting one to see, uh, you know, after going into uh, week six and uh, throughout the, the rest of the season. But we have to turn our attention back to the live action today for the other fights that we've got going on between a lot of people. Dirk Powell still on the back of Yamo Sass de Moynen. And interestingly, no early scheduled stops today like we saw it in Slagos. No, no. Uh, well, it is still pretty early, but even so, yeah, we've uh, we've not seen any just yet. I think it might just be that little bit easier to overtake than it was into Lagos. It was a real struggle for some last time, last week. So uh, maybe people deciding that it might go quicker a bit on the road as that's off the road for Chris Thacker. Oh, and back towards Dean Timms he goes. Who's going to end up in the wall here, or indeed backwards, or both? And Dean Timms is around. Might well be down to eighth by the end of all this. The pole sitter. Here in race two, and he does move down to eighth position. I'm afraid it's uh, not been a great race for Dean Timms, and uh, it's uh, it's only getting worse. I'm afraid as Chris Yomantas is also down in pit lane now. We've seen a lot of this so far, and this is involved with somebody else. Not entirely sure who though. I think it's Harry Wills. I think it's Harry Wills. I think he's got involved with Harry Wills, and that's a lot of damage to uh, to Yomantas. Or how all that's happened. Possibly, we could have seen somebody having a moment through the bus stop chicane and then getting clattered into by someone else. No, it's. I think that was side by side in the bus stop chicane. Oof. And uh, obviously, to the uh, person that was asking a little bit earlier on, Charles Bushell, uh, as to who's going to kill Harry today, it seems that Yamantas is the answer to that question. Side by side through the bus stop chicane.
it's it's always going to be a little bit messy and uh, it's hard to sort of to orchestrate uh, and uh, coordinate and yeah unfortunately for, for the pair them they sort of collected each other there's an Audi off as well to the right hand side that's Joan Reigns uh, who started quite high up I think was second in this race at some point taking a spin and stuck there waiting for an opportunity to pull back into the uh, into traffic yeah, it's difficult. Blind corner there. He's going to get white here on the grass and goes around into the wall pretty hard as well. Oh, dear me. Not, uh, not good news for your own range. He'll be waiting there a while as well as Anthony Letts is still leading here ahead of Lewis Poubier. That's Dean Timms just up in front of him. And this could get awkward to the bus top chicane. Chris Thacker holds on for a measure of our dad here, by the way. So this four-car train has gone down to... Poo, as Liam Ahern has come in, I don't know why. Maybe a, well, maybe an early stop, but it's a pretty long stop. Liam Ahern, it's, it's uh, Liam Ahern. Yeah, went off. Liam Ahern went off, and we're about to see it now. Oh, it's turn nine again. This corner claiming so many victims. Not even sure as to what it is, and he's just running a little bit wide, clipped one wheel on race one, didn't he? I think so. I think he did a very similar mistake. Uh, I don't think actually in race one he clipped the grass. He just sort of looped it around based on the sort of the inertia of the car, and the rear end was just like, nah, this is not happening. Uh, on this uh, sort of go round, he was uh, assisted by the grass. But yeah, that is a shame because these cars have got TC and ABS. They shouldn't be so prone to spinning, and yet. It is the same sort of cause for a lot of people. Thomas Dandridge off the exit of that left-hander as well. It's just the weight of the car shifting and not being uh, sort of just being, you know, exceeding the limit of, of what the car can achieve. It's not necessarily like they're being twitch under brakes or getting on the power too early and losing traction. It is just the car not cooperating with the load of, uh, of the corners. It's a weird one. You don't often, as you say, you don't often see uh, exit oversteer in these cars because of the traction control doesn't mean you can't lose it of course but it does uh, often alleviate some of those problems as that's we'll pack it down the inside of someone and um, I'm entirely sure quite why they're fighting so much since they're not in the same class um, but either way they are doing uh, who was that going through Kenny Herman's actually in the pro field he's just trying to make some progress uh, and uh, Edward Packer wasn't having any of it for a moment there uh, John Williams and Lucas Romano still in their cars getting repairs. Romano's repairs going over 10 minutes now. We know that John Williams is going to get zero from this race. I mean, it's, we're in a race against time now for Lucas Romano as well, who's only five minutes away from uh, knowing the fate of his race as well. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's going to be close. He's going to be hoping that he can get back onto circuit, but it's going to be hell if he drives around for half of this race with a severely damaged car that is just undrivable. Uh, because, yeah, even though you've been sat in the pit lane for, for however long, it does take a while for the car to actually reach a drivable level and, you know, not only be safe for him to drive, but also to be safe to have on track while everyone else is racing around around him. So it might not be worth those extra points. And all into the barrier there. That's Thomas Reiter tumbling down the order. Chris Chatterton now ahead and Neil Butler again. That could have ended very badly. A similar incident to what we saw with Andy Miller just a little bit further back uh, in the S's. Thomas Reiter able to get going, but oh, oh my dear. word, that's dangerous and all oh, into turn two I'm not too sure about that one well Butler was alongside there and it didn't look like Ryter was having any of it I'm afraid he's paid the price for that one as Kenny Hermans is going to make his way through here on another pro-am I think that is and to the right hand side and getting out his way and that's Michael Patterman it is so now oh my goodness that was a disappearing Ferrari as well I think is that Andy Miller emerging from the pit lane, maybe? Uh, no, he's still very much rooted to the spot there. Yeah, not sure. Uh, someone else's Ferrari is uh, way out wide of the outer loop now. So this race has been very chaotic, I've got, I've got to say. And looking at the schedule at the start of this season, Watkins Glen wasn't one of those rounds that I had down as a particularly chaotic one, but it has been. I know your Schumann class is going to add to that. He's in the top 10, but he's about wide and stationary at turn 10, at uh, turn 8, sorry. It's always the ones that you least expect to throw the biggest uh, curveballs. Here's Tony Norgren and looking to the inside of the bus stop chicane, Kurt Ver uh, Van Hoenack, really caught out by that. Yaime Sastamon just taking the racing line and being like, all right, I'm going to close this gap up as well. Uh, and is eyeing up P5 uh, in the AM um, standings at the moment in terms of this race. But a good move there from Norgren. Also a little bit further back between James Stades and Jasper Chiarks. They're uh, close on the back of Carl Pierce and James Stades uh, defending to the inside might have to keep it nice and tidy to sort of prevent these slips uh, the uh, cutback uh, sorry but uh, yeah no it's 
it's it's strange as to how chaotic this race has been. So many uh, strange uh, sort of DNFs and things like that, but we still have a fair share of action along the way as well because Trish Chatterton and Stuart Reynolds side by side towards the bus stop. And Reynolds has made good progress from 15th off of the start here. He's up to seconds now. He's got five seconds to get up to the win, uh, unfortunately for his sake, but he will consider this a success. You'd imagine Chris Chatterton's going to get out of Neil Butler's way again as well, you'd imagine does so towards turn six down his inside and he'll be through there so top three emerging once again i think we are starting to see a championship three emerge here at the halfway stage of this uh, of this season we're once again seeing albin kjellberg leading then stuart reynolds then neil butler those three have been really the talk of the season so far and that's uh, continuing on here in this race yeah, and uh, it is good to see how the championship storylines uh, ebb and flow uh, across the season. Uh, and yeah, it is, uh, is always going to be good to see. This isn't quite the fight for the race lead amongst the AMs that we would have hoped for. I'm not entirely sure as to who that BMW is, uh, but it Dean certainly Timms, isn't uh, Lewis Bouvier. But it is Dean Timms amongst the pro AMs and trying to uh, sort of make amends because there is a lot of drivers out of place. And it is, you know, slightly confusing. There's Lewis Bouvier second place, the Audi uh, just in the background of shot as they head in towards the, uh, in towards the toe. Lewis Bouvier doing a, a really good job in this race. If it's not a win, a second place definitely isn't that bad. Uh, of a result, especially in terms of his in terms of his championship uh, redemption and, and things like that. But yeah, there's just been so many strange incidents that have put a lot of people out of place, and you know, really sort of confusing in terms of the timing tower. Well, this is a, an interesting one now. Second place up for grabs. Neil Butler trying to make his way down the inside of Stuart Reynolds into the bus stop chicane, and Reynolds backs off even on the way in there. Didn't want anything to do with that, and so Butler will go through without any problem at all that was over the curb though and the but i'm going to stay close together stuart reynolds seeing the long game here we are after all still in the first half of this race somehow yeah it's uh, it's really uh, flown by to be fair um but yeah still got another half of this left to go hopefully it is going to calm down just a little bit here's jasper sharks to the uh, inside uh glenn humberstone sorry to the inside of jasper sharks and a uh, nice one uh, indeed up into the uh, into the top 10. Connor Botting is sort of languishing there in P9 for our championship leader going into this race, of course. And it seems like sort of the lack of practice early on this season is sort of coming back to bite him. And maybe a complacent attitude and, and things like that has really come full circle. P9 at the moment, Watkins Glen, uh, for sure, whatever the cause of it, definitely is not the, uh, the happiest uh, circuit for, for him. Certainly isn't. It's been a pretty unhappy time for, for a lot of drivers, I think, which is uh, ideal. Pancho Pedro under pressure from Asher El Haddad here, who's come from the back of the field in this race as well. On the inside he goes. Didn't start race one for some reason, but onto the podium now for this. This is a really topsy-turvy race in Pro-Am. The top three in the championship all in the pit lane and look like they're not going to finish this race. And the door's been open to some others like Michael Patterman to try and take a win here. It's a, a, a day of surprises, really, in this in this one. Although we can't be too surprised, Pastor has been flying under the radar a little bit in this season so far. He's fifth place in the standings as we go right now. Chris Chatterton under pressure from Stuart Reynolds again here. Not sure why Reynolds is all of a sudden falling back, but he's restored his third place now. Yeah, so Stuart Reynolds really having sort of a topsy-turvy. He uh, come into this race not really confident, of course, uh, regarding the, the balance of performance uh, to the to the Porsche, but he's not doing too bad in race two. Languished a bit in, in race one, of course, only was able to finish P15, but he's up there in P3, so making something out of it, but Neil Butler is uh, careering away uh, and now ahead. But it is... Uh, has allowed that fight uh, between himself and Stuart Reynolds, Chris Channison, Callum Beeman, etc., etc., to allow Alvin Kjellberg to build a seven-second gap now, and that is going to be very difficult for Butler to uh, chip away at. This is James Slates on the outside of Carl Pierce down and towards turn number one, uh, and he's going to have at least a little bit of a go. He's going to try. It is a very wide corner, also in the background between Humberstone and Botting. James Slates a little bit wide off the exit of turn one. That's going to force him to relinquish the place going through the S's, and now Humberstone potentially with that backwards momentum could be able to force them a uh, force the attack on botting let's not forget this is important for Connor botting now after a, a poor race one and took bounce up there in third in this race as well this is important as Glenn Humberstone applies the pressure oh that was uh, not nice from James Slates who goes wide at the bus stop and botting gonna take advantage of that so is Glenn Humberstone 
yeah, James Slate's getting things all wrong there. The Aspas Sharks is going to try and go through as well. That's Chris Thacker who's in there, who's trying to get through as a pro-am, but that's an overall position that let's not forget. And it might not be immediately obvious who's in which class when you're actually in the car. Asper Sharks now going to try and apply the pressure, but that was James Slate's getting things all wrong in the bus stop. It's been a tricky corner. It's been a tricky circuit, to be honest, uh, here at Watkins Glen. And uh, that's Carl Pierce taking a very unorthodox line uh, off the exit. And that's really tarnished his momentum, going to allow Connor Botting to the right hand side. Pierce has been caught napping there. Not entirely sure as to what caused him just to put two uh, tyres to the grass. That doesn't work anymore. Uh, it used to, not anymore. Uh, and it might actually hurt his tyres more than do them any good. But yeah, it's really not helped him in uh, keeping that seventh place relative to Connor Botting, who's now been able to sort of set off and leave this pack in the dust and oh my word that is optimistic from the Porsche looking for pretty much any gap that he could absolutely and that's back uh, right around the outside and pit lane now open of, well it's been open the whole time of course but 27 minutes in some drivers have decided that now's the time to come in and make a pit stop this is uh, Lee Holmes holding back Jonas Dreyer for sixth place in the pro field by the way Thomas Dandridge is back out there again after his pit stop that lasted eight minutes. Alex Pearl can uh, can better him with 13 minutes. Craig Seal was in there for nearly 15 minutes. They're all back again and looks like they're going to be scoring points but I'm afraid for the likes of Lucas Romano, for John Williams, it looks like it's going to be over despite the fact they're still in the session getting repairs. Louis Gardner and Andy Miller can be added to that list but I, I don't think we can be very surprised that Andy Miller is not going to be returning to the, uh, to the race here today. It, it, it said he was uh, had motion sickness after his crash, and you can definitely see why. Yeah, you can understand it. If you're only just joining us now and have no clue what we're talking about, just go back a few minutes and watch Andy Miller's crash. It was... It was a sight, and yeah, it happened. Uh, sorry, I just dropped my pen on the floor, which is very clever of me. But yeah, Andy Miller just completely, <laughs> just completely took off, and David Christie taking the mick at me in there in the in the ear. But no, yeah, it's it, it's yeah, it, it was uh, yeah. Here we're going to take another look at it. He just turned, it bounced off the BMW, oh and we're riding on board in the cockpit this time. This is why he's got motion sickness because he just didn't stop spinning. Uh, increased bounced off the circuit, skyrocketed to space back again, and then landed on his roof. And you can definitely understand as to, as to why he's not returning to the circuit. And there's the outside view. That's Kieran Smart cleaning him up. And, and that was Neil Butler, wasn't it, with contact there? Definitely did hit there in the Porsche, but it didn't seem to do any damage to him somehow. Certainly done a lot of damage to Andy Miller there, who is uh, now out of the race and, and will DNF this one, likely. But, uh, but yeah, that is what went down at the start of this one. Well, we've been looking at all of that, by the way. The leader in AM has come in. Uh, and uh, Anthony Letts has been into pit lane. I'm a little bit concerned about his pit stop time, though, here. 24 seconds is about 10 seconds longer than you really need. And Louis Poubier was, uh, was quite close to him before this pit stop phase. I have a feeling when this is all over, he might well not be in the lead. Yeah, pistol strategy always going to play a, a pretty big effect. It has done uh, all season long, even though it's only uh, for a top up of fuel because the sort of I think it's uh, around about 60% uh, fuel cap on these uh, for the for the rules for these cars, uh, and uh, the tyres are still perfectly fine. So it's just a top up on fuel, but the timing of it really can uh, make a difference and uh, determine if you sort of finish in the race lead or not. We saw last time out with uh, I'm not entirely sure as to who it was, but they really catapulted themselves. I think it was John Williams pitting really early into Lagos was able to. Just to uh, catapult himself up to the race lead uh, and yeah didn't look back was able to take his uh, second win of the night there unfortunately for him he's not been able to replicate it at Watkins Glen but yeah pitch strategy for sure playing a big factor this is a fight for sixth place uh, in the pros between uh, Lee Holmes and Kerry Harriman uh, and uh, still the raging on but that you know that top five fight really broken away from everyone else it certainly has uh, it's uh, been an interesting one Looks like uh, there's a four-car battle developing for second here with Stuart Reynolds uh, heading that one. And Callum Beeman here have been able to get in, in between Reynolds and Butler. I'm not sure how Butler has dropped from second down to fifth. Suddenly, oh dear, that's an Audi off the road. Who is that? One of the Ams, I would believe. Uh, but uh, I, I couldn't tell you who, just for the moment. To work that one out. I think it's your own range, quite possibly. Stuart Reynolds is in here. Stuart Reynolds is definitely going to be in. Wasn't Louis Bubier who went off there? 
He's still leading in, uh, in arm as Andrew Le uh, Ant Jimmy, Anthony Letts is back into the pit lane once again. This is a second stop. He has been off the road. It's clearly, it looks like that front end is crumpled a little bit, and this is why. Well, it's partly why. He's already got big damage by this stage. I, I, I'm confused. I think he had a bit of damage beforehand, which is why ah. the car just wasn't very confident at all, and then just spun himself into the pit lane and then towed himself back in. Uh, I think, so, sorry, I think that Audi's involved. I think they both went off at turn nine together. I think the Audi has lost it on the exit of turn nine in the grass, like we've seen. And Anthony, uh, Andrew Letts has hit it. Ant I've got it right the first time. Ant Anthony Letts has hit him. Let's see if I've, uh, my crystal ball is. <laughs> Going well, your own range goes off. Oh, and uh, Anthony, let's try to avoid it, but gets clipped and really smashes the front end of that Porsche. I'm afraid that is a real shame for him. No fault of his own, really. Yeah, just a passenger in, in another incident, which is, this, you know, the same thing that's happened quite a number of times, actually, for, uh, for quite a few people uh, throughout this race. That's why we've seen a number of DNFs, and uh, I think now we've only got seven pro ams still running uh you know and uh, yeah it's 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 been it's been a re it's been a it's been an evening it's been an event uh especially for those pro ams those poor sods who have uh, had to put up with a lot of carnage and a lot of chaos but this at the moment is the fight for provisional second place between Callum Beeman, Chris Chatterton and Neil Butler Neil Butler of course suffering from a little bit of damage earlier on in that skirmish with Andy Miller but he's still pressing on and still putting in some pretty competitive lap times as well it must be said yeah Stuart Reynolds, of course, uh, is uh, is behind at the minute because of a pit stop that he made just a couple of moments ago. But Bimmett still leads here with, uh, well, not leads, he's second. He's leading this group ahead of Chatterton and Butler. But it can't be very long until we see pit stops here. We are approaching 33 minutes into this one. This is lap 20. Lee Holmes is in uh, on this lap as well. We actually haven't got that many um, to come in now. Uh, we are only waiting for 15 of this near 50 car field to actually come in as it's side by side now with Neil Butler down the inside of Chris Chatterton it's through once again I'm still puzzled as to why Butler has found himself at the back of this group but anyway he's making progress now and he's in front of Chatterton again and now Michael Patman is doing a really good job uh, in the Pro-Ams. Granted, it is only now what I think to be, a, yeah, it's still a seven-car field. Liam O'Hearn and Felix Bell uh, a number of laps down. But you've got to be in it to win it. He's really taken this opportunity and, you know, not, um, you know, let it force him under a lot of pressure or whatever. He's really just uh, staying composed, staying calm and uh, pressing on with his race. I'm not entirely sure if he's still uh, owing us a, uh, a pit stop uh, left to go in this race, but again, we'll, we'll have to uh, wait and see. But either way, him and Ashraf El Haddad are separated by only about five seconds. So still, you know, can come down, still could throw us a bit of a curveball, especially if Michael Patterman makes a mistake, which based off, you know, how these races have going is a you know, it's, it's a safe bet to make. It definitely has a pretty likely chance of happening, but hopefully for Michael Patman, he can keep it nice and clean from here on in. Well, let's hope so. Five seconds. I wouldn't be sure about that gap with Asher Vell Haddad behind as well. Had a great season last season. <laughs> that, well, that was not well phrased, but uh, but you got the idea. As in the pit lane for Callum Beeman and Chris Chatterton following one another. And so it's uh, it's got to be pit stop time soon, but... It doesn't really matter when this man comes in. Albin Kjellberg has got a very big lead here, and it's going to be a big win by the looks of things if he can hold it together for the final quarter of an hour. He really did need a round like this because, as he said earlier, he had a slow start to the season, only 12 points at the first round. He did win a race at Hockenheim. He did win race one at Hockenheim. He won race two at the Red Bull ring. That last time, I got a couple of good results as well, but Kjellberg, this is really going to kick his season on now, and he's... he's likely going to have the championship lead after this as well yeah dean tim's having a bit of a spin going through the heel but alvin kjellberg yeah it's that one thing that's really been able to get his season into motion side by side now between Callum beeman and stuart reynolds is uh beeman exits the pit lane stuart reynolds going through turn one side by side through the s's the fight for the podium is the porsche able to keep him uh, firm on the inside no is the answer to that he's in the slipstream he might launch an offensive uh, maneuver down towards the bus stop chicane is not quite close enough though so stuart reynolds is gonna hang on to p3 provided he keeps it nice and clean but but very, very close, and for a pit stop margin, you really couldn't have asked for closer than that. Absolutely. It remains to be seen where Neil Butler's going to uh, filter out into this one as well. Chatterton, a long st well, he did have a long stop, but he's but he's lost a lot of time in the pit stop phase, so I'm not sure how he managed that. He must have had a conservative entry, I guess, because he doesn't really do anything on the exit, so 
That'll be an interesting one to find out as Louis Boubier does indeed come out in the lead. Suspected this would happen, I'm afraid, for Anthony Letts, who's really... D well, it, it doesn't matter anyway, does it? Because Anthony Letts, of course, is in the pit lane now. But either way, Louis Boubier has come out with a very big lead now. Tony Norgrant a mile behind. Dirk Bounce is quite a long way behind as well. And Louis Boubier may well get four in a row here. To be a fun Well, not four in a row, sorry, three in a row. The reason I nearly said four in a row is because he was second uh, in, in, in race one last week. By a very close margin, but either way, two, uh, three in a row, not bad at all. Uh, and exactly the kind of route, uh, round that Lewis Boubier needed as well. Alvin Kjellberg comes out the pit lane. He'll be leading. Neil Butler here with a slightly shorter stop by one second. We'll see if he can get out in front of Stuart Reynolds here. He's in front of Beeman, of course. Let's see. It's going to be close here, but I think Butler might just about have it. He is going to be under pressure, though, as Reynolds gets a run on him up towards the bus stop. Yeah, Stuart Reynolds, of course, uh, off that momentum. Butler with a slightly, uh, you know, poorer run coming out of the pit lane. But I don't think it's managed to uh, ruin his uh, momentum too badly because he's been able to get back up to speed before Stuart Reynolds became any sort of a threat. Uh, and it really is a fight for second. But Neil Butler caught up behind the lap traffic. Uh, fellow Porsche just in front of him. And that might allow Reynolds to close the gap ever so slightly. You can see the gap closing by a couple of car lengths just going into the outer loop. The Porsche is going to peel off. Maybe Neil Butler eyeing the move to the outside that isn't for position at all but it is slowing him down and that is definitely going to be to the pleasure of Stuart Reynolds who is now able to close the gap again to the outside Neil Butler is through and now it's Reynolds turn to try and get past that Porsche as efficiently as possible and Butler is able to put a lap car in between himself and Reynolds which is very important and the lap car once again not going to get out of the way uh, down towards turn eight here and you get the feeling Reynolds is not going to be pleased about this but he's going to have to deal with it and the lap car does indeed get out of the way now and so uh, that's good uh, good news for them I'm trying to work out who it is um, but uh, can't for the moment. I think it's Thomas Wright actually uh, Thomas Wright who's just in behind them there um, but either way Reynolds looks under pressure now we're pretty much restored to the positions that we saw about 15 minutes ago before it all changed for a moment and now it's uh, back to how it was but Callum Beeman is looking for a podium here. It will be a pretty big round for Beeman, actually, uh, if he was to be able to uh, to pull this one off, because he was uh, he was second in race one, and so a, a, a double podium will be will be very nice for him. Yeah, he's going to be eyeing that up for, for sure. Here's Carl Pearce eyeing up the move uh, on James Slates. The outside of the bus stop. It's a move we've seen before. It's a move we've not seen uh, sealed to perfection. And uh, to the wiser there, I think, just to back out, that was very close to comfort though. James Slates pushing the limits on the exit. This is now the fight for uh, uh, third place, uh, I should say, with uh, Stuart Reynolds under pressure from Callum Beeman. Uh, and he is going to pull to the right-hand side, goes to Porsche. Reynolds lets him go. So he didn't put up much of a fight there. Uh, against Beeman, maybe acknowledging that he's quicker, using him to try and catch up to Butler, or just knowing that it's not worth the fight to the outside. It'll be interesting to see how that develops as Michael Patterman here still leads in Pro Am after that pit stop phase. Edward uh, Packer is a lot closer to him. Astrovel Haddad is still at the same distance, but his, his pit stop was two seconds longer. So he is still closing, but there's only 10 minutes to go now. Patterman still knows that nursing a any four second lead here he might just have enough to get over the line here but it is going to be a nerve-wracking final moments here in pro-am with the main contenders actually out of this it's actually made for a more interesting race in some ways yeah i mean it's it's been one of those interesting ones that have thrown a curveball at pretty much every opportunity and yeah it's not been too densely packed in terms of side-by-side -side action. It's just been uh, different people retiring at different points, having different moments uh, of carnage and chaos. A and of course, with some big names uh, as well. Even, actually, hell, you're not even taken to the start of this race. It's 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 been a weird one, but definitely a good one uh, in just a different format. We saw, you know, a great race in Lagos in terms of side-by-side -side action. This one's just been sort of one of those ones that's developed over the course of the race in sort of different manners. Um, and yeah, with a, you know, a surprise winner, arguably, of, of Michael uh, Patterman after the form that Lucas Romano and John Williams have been on to see anyone else really take a win. And that is a BMW off to the left-hand side. That's also Jonas Dre yeah, going off. So... Oh, that is... I'm going to make a safe assumption and say those two have got something to do to each other. Yes, I think so. Well, might have something to do to each other after the race, yes. With each other, yeah. Uh, let's see. Jürgen Nuckert here was the first one who went off. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I think that's a freshly repaired BMW that got... Oh, no, 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 no! Oh. Jürgen Nuckert not looking. And Jonas Dreyer will be 
very, very displeased with that, I'm afraid. And that's engine damage as well for, for, for Knockout. I mean, what a, what a shame that is for, for both of them. So, can't quite uh, work out. Yanostre, uh, of course, already had problems in, in that race, but even so, there's not a lot that he could have done about this, unfortunately. Yeah, he's not, he's not Spider-Man. He couldn't have reacted to that at all uh, quick enough. Even if he could, his car definitely couldn't just to be coming at that speed. And then, boom, the BMW puts the power on just as he's coming through. That is the point of no return. And it's that point that Dre is like, I'm in too deep now. I've just got, I've just got to floor it and hope. And unfortunately for him, uh, Lady Luck wasn't on his side. Um, and, yeah, Jürgen Lockhart just went straight into the rear uh, right of him, sent him around. And he's not going to be too happy about that one. So I'm sure the thing they're going to be doing together is not going to be very pretty. Louis Bubio here, you can see big lead, 17 seconds to Tony Norgrand, took about third. Was those two involved in the, in the championship fight? Where's Connor Botting at the moment, trying to find him? Where is he? At uh, seventh place. <laughs> Blind. At uh, seventh place for him uh, right now. Yamas just a morning, third place in the championship coming in today. He's just behind in eighth place, there you can see him. So it's, uh, it's going to get a lot more interesting there, but I do get the feeling that Botting is going to have a drop week here. Well, he is going to, uh, with the uh, with the points the way they are right now. Dirk Bouts could be championship leader by the end of today, but uh, we'll, we'll wait and find out and, and report on that next week. We look at the battle for second place in Pro-Am. If, if Ashraf El Haddad wants to win this race, he needs to get through on Edward Packer very quickly, and even then it might be too late. It's, it's, it's going to be, yeah, it's, it's very touch and go. He needs to get on and just get on with it if he wants any chance. Pulling to the right-hand side goes Al Haddad on uh, Edward Packer. It's going to be the inside for the bus stop, which seems to be the dominant line, unless Packer is going to try it to the outside. It seems like he's given it a go, but Ashraf Al Haddad able to take the racing line. Now the gap, 4.2 seconds between him and the race leader. It depends what the differential in terms of pace is between uh, Michael Patterman and Ashraf Al Haddad. But is it four seconds in seven minutes quick? I don't think that's going to be the case. There's Craig Chill having an off and waiting an eternity, it seems, to rejoin. That's turn nine again, I'm afraid. The top of the hill here, causing trouble. As I said earlier, you, you, you rise up towards the crest there and it levels off. And for some reason, the rear end leaves you. And I'm afraid that's what's happened to Craig Chill there. Already a few laps down, but he's just uh, going for points now. Imagine Shield down in, in 30 seconds overall. He's just passed Anthony Letts though, so there's another uh, uh, another few points. Jerome Reigns is a, a two laps in front of him right now, so he'll be able to uh, to overtake him as well. So it's well worth the investment. Uh, as Arvin Kjellberg at the front of the field, by the way, sets another fastest lap of the race. That's a 41-1, and he's even uh, texting in the uh, in, in text chat as well right now. Uh, in the Discord, so uh, he's uh, he's clearly very relaxed with his lead, with just over five minutes to go. Yeah, similar to saw. Uh, wh wh when was it? It was Arvin Kjellberg, I think. It, uh, uh, was it? Was it last week? I think so. Well, he, he won race. Oh, sorry. T he might. He, 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 I think two weeks ago, maybe, where he won race two. I guess. I remember Alvin Kjellberg sort of taking a stab at some people during the race, and I think it was Hockenheim where he really had a dominant display, uh, particularly in race one and I think race two as well, uh, and he just had the time to chill, uh, which is fair enough. Uh, if you've got time to do that in, in a league race where you're fighting for a championship, you've, you've got to respect the commitment. It does make you seem a, a little bit uh, stupid if you do end up messing up because of it, but if it goes right, then you just look like an absolute hero. Well, yeah, we'll see how it goes for him in the next five minutes or, or so. He's just come over the line again to do another 41-1, but it wasn't quite the fastest lap of the race that time. Five minutes to go, and so uh, there will be possibly three laps, maybe four. We'll wait and see. We're very much on the on, on the boundary there. Um, but uh, but let's, uh, let's wait and see on that. Bit of a battle developing here for the uh, fifth place inside the AM category. Carl Pearce. Just in front of James Slates and Connor Botting, who's looking for a couple of positions here. They're going to run up the hill towards the uh, bus stop chicane. And so uh, we'll see if a fight develops here. But Botting will certainly want these uh, positions and it'll want these points as well because he's not exactly had many of them yet this, uh, this, this round. Yeah, it's, it, he does need to sort of pick up what he can uh, in terms of uh, damage limitations. Just have a look actually quickly as to what his uh, drop week is, if it's actually any decent. 
uh, or not. It's it's well, I mean, it's sixty points for for his drop week over a, a hundred that you can score. So it's not actually too bad of a drop week to uh, fall back on. Uh, I think he got uh, yeah, well, fifty four points in. Uh, in race two is is third place so not bad uh, by any means but that race one six points is not great um but he's yeah it, it's good, definitely going to help him just to pick up a couple of points here and there especially considering with lewis bubier uh, on form recently um and, and leading this race as well it's 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 going to be close in terms of the championship dirk bout as well up there in p3 scoring some good points uh versus uh, versus connor botting so if he does want to keep his championship fight alive he's got uh what is now going to be uh, three minutes uh and only a couple laps to pick up what is going to be uh sort of a, a ceiling of fifth place Yes, uh, that's pretty much all you, you, you can see him getting there. Just under four seconds now, the gap between one and two. Stuart Wines has also gotten through on Edward Packer here to round up the podium. But with three minutes to go, it looks like Eshabel Haddad is going to fall short in this, uh, in this race for the win, at least. It looks like it's going to go to Michael Patterman if things continue as they are. He's performed well in race two in the past. Best performance second. Uh, in a race two that was back at the hoggenheim at uh, round two all the way back over a month ago now or oh, not even not even that but uh, looking for a race win here there he is over the line again two laps maybe three uh, to go we'll wait and see where now being gets to the line here he's still setting really fast lap times it was another 41 one from him on the last lap would have been the fastest lap of the race so far if he didn't get an off track uh, it, during it but fuel loads are, are clearly getting light and uh, he was nine temps quicker than any other driver in the field on that lap Albin Kjörberg is not exactly hanging about even with his big lead yeah, so uh, instead of uh, typing in the Discord chat, he's decided to put his dominance to good use and use uh, some of that pace, display some of that pace. And yeah, yeah, uh, relative to Neil Butler, a 41-1 for Alvin Kjellberg, a 42-1 for, for Neil Butler. So uh, yeah, literally a second uh, quicker on that last lap there. Best lap times, even that is four tenths quicker or three and a half tenths quicker for Alvin Kjellberg. He is just so rapid and consistent as well. That last lap, uh, a 41.4. So even only a couple of tenths discretion between his lap times he's just been on fire since the start of this race you know cruised the victory uh well i say cruise to victory it wasn't quite a cruise to victory but looked confident uh in order to take victory in race one and then just didn't look back in race two was able to get himself through the traffic very efficiently and by the time neil butler had cleared it himself got himself uh, head above the water Alvin Kjellberg was gone and pretty much unreachable and that gap just built and built and built to the point where Neil Butler was just hopeless and had to anchor in for second place. It looks like Kjellberg is going to extend his uh, championship lead now to 14 points considering he started the day down in what third in the championship I think is uh, very much improved. Chris Thacker I think has been off the road as well in this race it's not been well, yeah, a good performance last week but it's not it's been repeated I'm afraid this week. I think it was a mistake from him on that lap. It's allowed Dean Timms anyway to get up to sixth in the race that he started from the pole position, of course. Just over 30 seconds remaining. Two and a half seconds for the Pro-Am win at the moment. But I think this is going to be the final lap of the race. Possibly. We'll wait and see. Kjellberg is in the final sector now. Here he is coming out of turn nine. And it's, uh, it's going to be very close here. I'm not entirely sure whether this is going to be the last lap or not. We'll wait and see if we get this checkered flag coming out the final corner. I don't actually think we are going to. Oh, we are indeed. The checkered flag comes out and it will be the win for Albin Kjellberg. He sweeps the round at Watkins Glen. It's by more than 20 seconds this time. And it's a big step forward in the championship, which he now leads ahead of Neil Butler, who had a hard fought battle for second place. Callum Beeman has been chasing him down all the way, actually, in these final moments. But he's not quite been able to get there. Those two are going to round out the podium ahead of Reynolds and Chatterton. All within 30 seconds inside the top five. An attritional race in Pro-Am. It's going to see a lot of the big-name contenders finishing way down here. The likes of Lucas Romano, John Williams, Liam Ahern, all way down, laps down, and into the void step Michael Paterman, who's going to look like winning this race by just over two seconds in the end. Eshevel Haddad didn't quite have enough laps to get there. 
He's going to miss out by about two and a half seconds. Patterman weaves over the line. He wins race two at Watkins Glen ahead of El Haddad. Then it's uh, Stuart Ryan is in that third place. Chris Packer, Francois Pedro around at the top five and not far behind is Louis Boubier uh, from the Am field. He's going to win here. He will sweep the day as well. Ahead of Tony Norgrand by a good 25 seconds. Louis Boubier has figured these reverse grids out. Yeah, well, he's been, uh, you know, doing pretty well as, as Tony Norgrand. Louis Boubier as well, taking yet another victory. So it, it seems that he's sort of brushed off that curse. He's, you know, he, he, he got the bad stuff out of the way. And then as soon as one happened, it sort of just snowballed into another one. And he's been on such good form. He really deserves to have taken a victory uh, here again. It was a very good race amongst all three uh, of the categories uh, in terms of chaos, drama, storylines, whatever. And somehow this is how they very unexpectedly, in some cases, racked up after 50 minutes. Absolutely. Alvin Kjellberg, not too surprising, I suppose, but he did come from 10th to win this race uh, by 21 seconds ahead of Neil Butler. Callum Beam and uh, Stuart Reynolds weren't far behind. The nib was Chris Chatterton to run at the top five. Kenny Herriman's sixth place ahead of Lee Holmes. Thomas Reiter was one lap down. Jonas Dreyer finishes in ninth ahead of Thomas Dandridge. And then Ayush Yomantas. Uh, they'll score points, but Harry Wills, Louis Gardner, Kieran Smart and Andy Miller will not uh, from race two. In the Pro-Ams, it was an unexpected win for Michael Patterman uh, in this one. Ashraf El Haddad, just two seconds adrift there in second. Stuart Ryan is third at Edward Packer. Francois Perjau, top five. Uh, posted to Dean Tim's sixth place ahead of Chris Thacker. Liam Mahone will get points, so will Fitz Pearl. But Lucas Romano, John Williams, Ewan Hootenen, uh, Jeremy De Boiver and Didier Vlamic will not score any points uh, from the Pro-Am field. And finally in the Ams, it was another victory for Luz Boubier, 25 seconds ahead of Tony Norgran, then Dirk Bout in, in third, rounding off the podium. Glenn Humberstone, fourth ahead of uh, Carl Pierce, rounding out the top five. James Slex was sixth ahead of uh, Championship leader coming into today, uh, Connor Botting. Thomas Aston Moynin was eighth ahead of Kurt Van Honecker and uh, Jasper Sarks, rounding out the top ten. Alistair Hatcher was eleventh ahead of Craig Seal, Jerome Reigns, uh, Anthony Letts and Jürgen Knockart. Uh, Mark Oliver, Timo McKeown and, and Navarro de Boiver didn't make it to the end of that race. So that's your, uh, that's your race two here from Watkins Glen. And we'll uh, bring in the race winner now. Albin Kjellberg wins race one and two. Albin, welcome back. Good to have you back again. Race two victory uh, on this occasion. You made your way through the field very, very quickly uh, in that race. Were you surprised by how quickly you made your way towards the front? Uh, yeah. It was really quick, but a lot of people had incidents out of me, um, and there were there was fighting going on. So it was good. I, I managed to get in the lead. I saved a bit of fuel as well uh, in the fighting. So <laughs> all went to uh, all went to plan in that one. And, and, and as you say, there was a lot of incidents. We're watching one of them. Um, were you surprised by just how many incidents there were? Because we were talking about incidents, incidents and crashes and spins for, throughout almost the entirety of that race and race one as well. Was it one of those circuits you thought could produce that kind of race or were you surprised? No, definitely. For some reason, I don't get why, but for some reason this, this track does have a lot of crashes. I don't see why, uh, especially on the first couple laps. Uh, it was the same last season and... Uh, I don't know why it is. It just is like that. No idea why. Uh, I can't quite figure out why either, um, well. to be honest. But, but uh, it's a bit of a weird one. But um, either way, I, I suppose it benefited you uh, throughout the uh, throughout the two races here tonight. Congratulations, Albin, on the on the Thank sweep, ra winning race one and two. Uh, and thanks very much for coming to have a chat with us. Thank you. Thanks so much, uh, Albin Kjellberg. Race one and two victory here tonight very successful evening for him it's a pretty successful one for Luz Boubier as well who will now uh, bring in welcome uh, to the Boob Lewis a double race victory for you on this occasion we've seen you win one race or the other for the last three weeks but this week you finally managed to get both in one and um, you were uh, you must be very pleased with uh, with your uh, with your evening's work oh yeah after all the practice I put in <laughs> just to uh, stand a chance like, the car was just amazing around here. The Audi really came alive on this track, where it's struggled quite a bit on others. Like, from the moment I got in, I was like, I have a chance here. I got pole, managed to uh, win from pole in the first race, and then the second race, like, first lap, people were battling. I managed to get through the, 
the fast drivers like uh, Tony uh, quite quickly and then it was just chasing down uh, Anthony for the, the race win. He pitted a couple of laps early and then I believe there was an incident going into the pit lane with uh, another car which caused him to uh, crash out so it would have been a close race between two of us if that hadn't happened but things just went my way this week. Yeah, there certainly was an incident. It wasn't actually on the way into the pit lane. It was out on the circuit uh, when he'd rejoined again. But I, I thought you were going to come out in front anyway because his pit stop was tw 10 seconds too long. Well, not too long, but it, it was going to be longer than yours anyway. So, um, yeah, I, th I, I don't think it would have mattered uh, for your sake anyway. Um, but but uh, but either way, um, I want to refer back to the championship again. I know we've been speaking about it a lot, but you've been very clear from the very start that you've wanted to challenge for it. Uh, 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 and that uh, and that you're going to be up there. You seem to be kind of getting stronger week on week, and you seem to be scoring more points with every week. Is that something that that you see continuing on? Do you see yourself continuing to get better throughout the season, or do you think there's one or two circuits that might slip you up uh, in the second half of the season? Uh, maybe a couple of circuits. I know Daytona and Monza being top end cars or top speed cars uh, tracks. I may struggle around there because the Audi just doesn't quite have the top speed if you want to make it around the corners uh, but then also the championship leader Con is in an Audi so he's going to be suffering the same and since he had a, a bad week this week uh, I've gained a, a lot of points on him as well as uh, Dirk and Sastamoinen who are also ahead of me so I think as long as I can keep it clean even if I do maybe not finish as well as I would hope I think I still got a good chance of getting back in and being there or thereabouts for the last race of the season. Absolutely, all about those uh, consistent results, which you are now starting to get, which is uh, certainly a good thing. Congratulations on two race victories tonight, Lewis, and uh, thanks very much for coming to have a chat with us. Excellent, thank you guys. Thanks very much. Uh, Lewis Pubier, uh, two race victories in one uh, here tonight. No such thing going on in Pro-Am, but we have got the race two winner, Michael Patterman, with us. Michael, welcome to the booth. Good to have you here as well. Race two victory. You were getting closed in on by Ashraf El Haddad towards the end of, uh, of that race. Um, were you a bit nervous that you were going to get caught and lose the lead right in the final moments, or were you confident that you could uh, yes, that you could Yes, I was lead? a little bit uh, in panic because he's catching very fast. But I have to say, I have some uh, do some fuel saving, and and uh, yeah, that was the the last rounds. I guess he sold me. I have only one liter, so I'm a little bit panic. So I drive it lift and coast, and I'm happy that he's not catching me. But I have also say uh, congratulations to him, to Haddad and also to Wyness. Absolutely, uh, good podium from them as well. I mean, there was a lot of incidents going on today, as we mentioned already. Were you surprised by the amount of them uh, as well? Because I, I, I've got to say that I certainly was. Um, there were a lot of cars going off. Were you surprised about the number of incidents? Um, a little bit. But I guess this is always tricky, this track, because the first corner is a straight right. So the most of them would try to win on the first corner, but uh, hopefully not happening with me, but sadly with my uh, team colleague with the pile. So sadly for him. Uh, yeah, I hope the next one is better. Absolutely. Let's see how it goes at Montreal, uh, of course, next week. But for now, congratulations on uh, on race you. two victory tonight, uh, Michael. And uh, yeah, good luck for next week. We look forward to seeing you there. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Have a good night now. Thanks very much. Michael Patterman, victorious in race two in the Prams. And we're going to stay in Pram as well uh, for Stuart Wyness as well. Third place here today in, uh, in that race. Stuart, welcome to... At the booth, uh, you just about got up into third place. Had to make a late pass to get there um, on uh, Edward Packett. Um, how pleased are you that uh, you managed to sneak that podium at, uh, uh, right at the end? Yeah, Andrew, guys, I'm very pleased after uh, a horrid first lap. Um, a little bit of contact at turn one and then a half spin in the boot. So I was almost caught by the arms in that race. So happy to get P3 in this. Absolutely, and we haven't uh, spoken to you too much so far uh, this season, but we've uh, completed the first 10 races of, of 20 now. First five rounds are behind us. Um, are you happy with how the first half of your season has gone, or were, were you a little bit? Uh, were you hoping for more a little bit? I'm more happier now. That's two P3s today, so 
I am uh, more happier that I've got more pace in the car and I'm feeling a bit more comfortable now. So yeah, it's going okay. Absolutely, starting to uh, string some uh, results together. Congratulations on third place here tonight, Stuart. Uh, it's uh, good to see you again, and uh, uh, and yeah, we'll uh, we'll see you again next week. Yeah, see you later, guys. Thanks very much. That's Stuart Ryan's third place in pro am uh, after race two uh, today. Well, that's just about going to do it uh, here tonight. Then at the interviews that I'm racing now indeed complete so all is left for us, for us to say our farewells thanks very much to everybody who's uh, tuned in here tonight it's been another very exciting evening of racing indeed make sure you tune in in three hours time though the US version of this championship will be kicking off of course so uh, make sure you stay tuned for that um, of course we look forward to seeing you there uh, but if it is indeed in a few hours or indeed next week when we'll see you next it's good goodbye for now from me you and O'Leary Zach Sweeney's been alongside me David Christie has been behind the cameras and until we see you next week it's goodbye for now <laughs>